Doesn't that have a tropical feel to it? The sign post fluttering in the wind there. Elsa made landfall in the U.S. as a strong tropical storm. Official landfall at Steinhatchee, Florida. That's near Cedar Key in the Big Bend area. And gosh, look at that waves of rain just sweeping across the street there. Winds topping out at 65 miles per hour at the time. Just a little bit shy of hurricane status as expected to be in that strong tropical storm range. The storm, though, is uh, far from over. Right now, Elsa continues to pound parts of the southeast with strong winds and heavy rain. We're watching for possible tornadoes in Florida and then uh, uh, in Georgia and then eventually the Carolinas. And from there, Elsa is expected to march up the east coast, uh, bringing tropical storm conditions through the northeast, including just outside of D.C., maybe New York into the Boston area and the Cape. The very heavy rain and wind in your forecast. Let's start out with what's happening right now. Here are the latest stats on Elsa. 8 o'clock advisory from the National Hurricane Center. We're about an hour away from the next update coming in from them. 45 mile per hour winds movement still north northeast at 14. Uh, that location at the time was 75 miles due west of Brunswick. But at that same time, we had flood warnings in Brunswick, 75 miles away from the center. And that's because that east loaded storm continues. Very heavy rain with thunderstorms in Savannah now and headed directly towards Hilton Head with all kinds of lightning. So we're going to start with that because that is one of the big factors. Thanks for staying with us as our live continuing coverage of Elsa is ongoing right now. I'm meteorologist Mark Elliott along with storm specialist Carl Parker. And Carl, this storm's got a ways to go. It's going to go all the way up the coastline over the next couple of days. But kind of first and foremost is that thunderstorm complex coming towards the Hilton Head area. Yeah, it's going to be a, a pretty rough night in Savannah as well as into uh, Charleston overnight tonight. And we expect that there's going to be a heavy rain threat, a tornado threat, also gusty wind along the coast. Right now, 45 mile per hour tropical storm moving north, northeast at 14 miles per hour. And there you see the forecast track and intensity. So uh, basically expected to be a low grade tropical storm going forward. But that is still going to mean uh, plenty of impacts here, including, as Mark mentioned, that very heavy rain, which is now coming up uh, into areas of Georgia and South Carolina. You see the big band here that is now driving into Savannah. We could be looking at some rainfall rates of one to two inches per hour. In fact, on Sapello Island, which is to the south, we've got a report of a three inch per hour rainfall rate. So it is really coming down in some of these storms and a lot of lightning here as well. Uh, that is just about ready to come up into Hilton Head Island. The heavier rain and the lightning uh, going to be moving in in short order. And also, we have been noticing some little areas of spin. There's one right in there. And so that's not surprising. There's a lot of low level wind shear right now and there is an ongoing tornado threat tornado watch for parts of Georgia and South Carolina and that is going until five o'clock in the morning. So uh, just have a way to be notified when you go to bed tonight, whether it's your phone or whatever it is, uh, have a way to be awakened if we do, in fact, get a tornado warning. That's going to continue into tomorrow, that tornado threat along the 95 corridor and in eastern parts of uh, North and South Carolina. So here's the model forecast showing you that big area of very heavy rain coming up between Savannah and Charleston overnight tonight. So Beaufort and Hunting Island there uh, getting up into Edisto and then eventually uh, towards Charleston as well. A lot of heavy rain between, say, 2 and 4 o'clock in the morning in Charleston, also in Columbia and back and into Augusta. Then tomorrow morning that comes up into Myrtle Beach, into Cape Fear, into Wilmington, the Triangle there, Fayetteville, all those areas just getting walloped by heavy rain and strong wind. And that will then uh, move over towards the sounds, the Outer Banks getting into the afternoon. Still a lot of wet weather in Raleigh. See, it takes a long time to move out. It's going to be around for most of the day tomorrow. And so along with that, we are going to see a flash flood threat. And then everything does really clear out as we go into the afternoon. So there you see the flash flood threat. Flash flooding is likely in eastern parts of Georgia and also in South Carolina. Uh, winds now gusting to 40 miles per hour in Savannah, and that is going to be moving up and along the coast, especially in that big band of rain mark. Uh, that's where some of the strongest wind is going to be found and uh, possibly some tornado producing storms as well. Yeah, absolutely. And so we continue to follow that chance for more severe weather because that is a very common occurrence with these landfalling tropical systems. Uh, Carl, I know you uh, this caught your eye earlier. This is a just an unbelievable tornado in size 
for a tropical system. This is the one that came through near the Jacksonville area earlier today. Yeah, you know, this video really illustrates what is so dangerous about these, you know, land falling tropical systems that produce tornadoes because first of all, there's a lot of tree cover in the southeast. Second of all, the bases are very, very low. Third of all, there's a lot of moisture in the atmosphere and a lot of rain. So all of those things serve to not give you really good visibility. You can kind of make out the shape of a tornado there, but you can see how the untrained yeah. eye might mistake that for something else, you know, maybe just some part of a thunderstorm. And so it just makes it doubly dangerous uh, to see that, you know, coming through there. In this case, there was actually good visibility. And here's another view of that same storm from the technology. The Doppler radar saw that couplet actually saw the debris. Sometimes tropical induced tornadoes actually don't produce a very well formed couplet. It's even difficult for the technology to see. Uh, in this case, it was a little bit more well formed, as you see here. That was a big time storm coming through the Jacksonville areas uh, area, uh, specifically on the south side. And one of those possible tornadoes being blamed for the first Elsa related death in the United States. The strong winds knocked down a tree in Jacksonville that this afternoon that fell on two cars, killing one person. Meteorologist Tevin Wooten is in Jacksonville with more on the damage there. Light rain is falling right now. This is a marked difference from where we were earlier in the day as Tropical Storm Elsa came through. I'm meteorologist Tevin Wooten in Duval County, downtown Jacksonville, right behind me. So far, this area has seen between two and three inches of rainfall. A lot of that fell in a short amount of time, which led to some flash flooding, water covering roadways and several streets throughout Duval County. What else did we see from Tropical Storm Elsa? Winds between 40 and 50 miles per hour. That was enough to bring down about two to three dozen live oaks in Sewanee County. And then we saw two squalls. The first squall that came through contained damaging winds. Unfortunately, that was enough to bring down a tree on top of two cars, which led to an accident. One person died as a result of that accident. And then the second squall that came through shortly after, right around five o'clock, that produced a tornado warn storm, which set, uh, carried for several counties from Fruit Cove into Duval County and points towards the north and east. Two, that also produced damage as well. We're talking about trees down, siding down, roadways closed as a result of that. And yes, the fire and rescue department here in Jacksonville still letting residents know that some of those roads are still closed. It'll be a while before they're able to get out because of the deteriorating conditions that we still see. We've got to wait for Elsa to pull out before rescue crews and also first responders can go in and clear out the debris. That's the latest here from Jacksonville. I'm meteorologist Tevin Wooten. Let's send it back to you. Thank you, Tevin. And we have some new video now of some of the damage from that suspected tornado in the St. Mary's area of Georgia. That's in the southeast part of the state near the coast. Same general complex as the one that came through the Jacksonville area. And you can see a lot of tree damage here. Trees strewn across cars there. Uh, gosh, that is a mobile home that looks like it was picked up and rolled. So mobile homes are never safe when any sort of wind comes their way, straight line wind or otherwise. But that actually may be part of a vehicle that got rolled up too. So again, the mobile or modular home there and then uh, maybe a car that then got rolled up on. Uh, gosh, lots to follow for sure. Here's a, another uh, view of some of that. We've seen some of that siding getting ripped off, even the well more well constructed, more permanent uh, featured structures, if you will. Now. Tornado watch continues right now and through the night to about 5 a.m. from the Townsend area to Savannah, Hilton Head, Edisto to Charleston. Charleston much later uh, down the road. But look at this. We've got this, uh, you know, classic formation where the inflow air at the surface is coming this way, bending back towards our area of low pressure. Remember, the low is still back here. But if you go up in elevation by about a mile up or so, 5,000 feet up, and suddenly those winds are coming this way. That is a very different wind direction with height. And we're starting to see some signs that that could translate into tornadoes. It's why this is the red zone for you tonight. Savannah to Charleston, a possibility of tornadoes. That's a three out of 10 on the Torcon. Not widespread tornado activity, but certainly a handful are possible when you see a number like that. Uh, we know what happened already. We've been talking about the tornado reports from back here, as well as uh, the Jacksonville area, and then uh, the southeast side of Georgia. Those are the three 
tornado reports that we've been telling you about throughout the late afternoon, early evening. Look at this band, though. This is crazy. The amount of rain that we have within here. Let me turn on the lightning for you just for a second, because if I leave it on, you at uh, times can't even, uh, you know, see what's going on. Uh, it looks like we have a, a bit of a, a change. I only have the immediate current lightning as opposed to what's happened over the past uh, hour or so. But in any case, Look, that is real time lightning coming in strike after strike after strike impressive enough that just in the time that I was talking to you we've got seven or eight strikes. It's a highly electrified storm then within there right on the edge you see how we have these bright greens that translate to a little bit less bright that can sometimes be that classic appearance of a tropical tornado that or short lived hard to see by the radar, but sometimes you can get spin up tornadoes in those little intersections where there's a just enough of a wind shift. You don't need much with these bands coming through. That complex is going to be going through Savannah right now and eventually towards Hilton Head and should get and continue right up the coastline. So by say 4 or 5 a.m. Charleston, that's the mess that's headed towards you. Let's time that out for you a little bit, uh, uh, you know, more exactly. Uh, so that you know exactly what to expect through the rest of the night. Uh, there goes our storm rotating away. N r remember, the low is up here near Augusta heading towards Columbia, and I think there will be at least a core of tropical rains near that low pressure center. But some of the worst of the weather will be right along the coastline as we go through the overnight into tomorrow morning. Uh, Wilmington, you get in on the mix by the time we get to say 8, 9 a.m. It'll continue to be raining for you until early afternoon and then it eases up a bit. So much moisture left behind that we may see a secondary round of pop up storms coming in late afternoon to evening tomorrow through the southeast, which is important. If there is any cleanup, you got to watch uh, those storms. Uh, you know, if it's a weakened structure compared to where it was before all this mess, uh, then even a garden variety thunderstorm becomes a much bigger deal. So Carl up the coast, we're watching uh, officials starting to get ready. Yeah, emergency officials have been preparing for Elsa. You were looking at live pictures from South Carolina, Charleston, South Carolina. It is going to get really stormy overnight tonight. The heaviest of rain probably coming in somewhere around 2 o'clock in the morning, 2 to 3 to 4 o'clock in the morning. Very heavy rain, very gusty wind. We can't rule out a tornado warning in the region as that is coming through. Now, let's advance the story beyond that and show you where the storm is going to be going. And so we're expecting to see... Uh, it continuing up into the northeast, but a very heavy rain threat for a lot of the southeast in the meantime. So we're looking at uh, a rain uh, on the order of about two to three inches on the high end in some spots, uh, talking about South Carolina here, as well as into North Carolina. It's going to be lingering for quite a while there in North Carolina, but uh, especially in coastal areas tonight is where you've got the greatest rainfall threat. Uh, anywhere from eastern parts of Georgia into eastern South Carolina. Uh, looking at the model forecast, again, that heaviest of rain is going to come up and into Charleston, uh, 2 o'clock in the morning most likely, then uh, moving up uh, over towards Myrtle Beach into 4 o'clock in the morning and continuing on into Wilmington into the early morning hours, about 8 to 9 o'clock in the morning. And Raleigh, man, it is going to be raining probably for most of the day tomorrow in Raleigh just because uh, the center of the storm is going to be coming through. So it's starting in the morning. It's continuing into the early afternoon. It's continuing through the afternoon, finally winding down perhaps around the dinner hour. So uh, certainly could be some flash flood warnings there in the triangle along with this storm. Mark? There and many other places because the Northeast is also concerned about Elsa's path. We have some very densely populated cities, of course, along I-95, the D.C., Philly, New York corridor, and then on to Boston as well. Looking at D.C. and New York live for you tonight. A lot of people here could be affected by flooding or maybe even power outages, partially because of the rain from Elsa, which is no slouch, but also partially because of the repeated you know, summertime thunderstorms that we've been dealing with for the past couple of nights. That includes tonight severe thunderstorms uh, in New York State, in Pennsylvania, and we'll show you those as the show rolls on. But let's track just the core from Elsa making its way again. It's in Georgia now, but all the way up the New England coastline. That includes entering, say, South Jersey sometime early Friday, uh, the Boston area by Friday afternoon, and exiting as we officially start off our weekend into the Canadian Maritimes in Southeast Canada. But it'll be just enough, uh, just close enough, I should say, to the coast 
to still be tapping into that tropical moisture feed. I think there's going to be a pretty good conveyor belt of moisture coming up and pointed right towards some of those big cities of I-95. Uh, and there will be some help from the upper level winds and a bit of a front approaching and an upper level feature approaching from the west. That will help speed it up, but it could also be responsible for some more storminess both ahead of and behind uh, Elsa moving through. So the, you know, the wind threat, the tree damage threat, power line threat, flooding threat, those are all kind of stacked together because of the days of rain and on either side of Elsa's rain. So let's take a look at that. Here's Atlantic City for your Thursday. A little bit of rain shower activity at times. We start getting some pop-up thunderstorms Thursday evening. Uh, and then overnight leading into Friday, uh, then the steadier rain starts coming through. That is officially Elsa's rain by that point. You start seeing the more prolific rounds of rain when you look at the New York City area. Uh, upstate New York sees a round come through overnight tonight, then again for Thursday afternoon to early evening. Then the meat from Elsa comes through as we work our way through Friday morning. Terrible morning commute in New York. Uh, should be better by your evening commute of Friday. We want you to stay with the Weather Channel for continuing coverage as we track Elsa. Live reports and expert analysis you won't get anywhere else as we continue to follow the storm up the coastline. Turn to Rugged, the all-new, ruggedly redesigned 2022 Nissan Pathfinder. I'm David Collado, president and co-owner of Happy Howie's Dog Treats. We make all-natural dog treats, and we're growing really fast. So fast, we were maxing out production. That's why I chose the Spark Cash Card from Capital One, because I earn unlimited 2% cash back on everything I buy. Last year, I redeemed $21,000 in cash back. Seriously, $21,000, which I use for new equipment so we can feed even more dogs. Thanks to my Spark Card, we're in over 4,000 stores across the country. What's in your wallet? Hi, Verizon launched the first 5G network, and now we want to be the first to give everyone the joy of 5G by giving every customer a new 5G phone on us. <laughs> Old customers, new customers, families, businesses, in-laws, law firms. Every customer, new 5G phones when you trade in your old ones. And if you're not a customer, we'll help cover the cost to switch. Just ask Wanda. She's been with us since <gasps> now. Upgrade your phone. Upgrade your network. <laughs> Experience Makita's cordless outdoor power equipment. The mower cuts non-stop for up to two miles. Get unstoppable power without the hassles of gas. Now get two extra free batteries. smile well 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 look at you you mastered the master bath you created your own style and you yes you turned a sourdough starter into a sourdough finisher so when you learn your chronic dry eye is actually caused by reduced tear production due to inflammation you take it on by talking to your eye care professional about restasis which may help you make more of your own tears with continued use twice a day every day Restasis helps increase your eye's natural ability to produce tears, which may be reduced by inflammation due to chronic dry eye. Restasis did not increase tear production in patients using anti-inflammatory eye drops or tear duct plugs. To help avoid eye injury and contamination, do not touch the bottle tip to your eye or other surfaces. Wait 15 minutes after use before inserting contact lenses. The most common side effect is a temporary burning sensation. Ask your eye care professional about Restasis. Now to trick out these lights. Visit Restasis.com to learn more. Jade makes people do crazy things. It's almost like we know what we're doing. Men everywhere are now cutting their hair at home. Are you? Introducing Microtouch Titanium Trim, the all-new at-home hair cutting tool and precision groomer. Now, cutting hair is as easy as combing hair. If you can comb it, you can cut it. 
simple. The revolutionary design positions the blades on the side like a comb. Snap on a comb to dial in the perfect length and just comb and cut for pro-level results at home. Snap off the comb and edge sideburns and beards. Or clear your neck and shoulders. And look, titanium trim extends a full 40 millimeters for those hard to reach areas. Nothing else comes close. Titanium coated blades, five custom attachments, built-in extension handle with a non-slip grip and LED spotlight. Order online now at titaniumtrim.com or call 1-800-453-0724. If you don't have it, you better get it. Comb it and cut it with MicroTouch Titanium Trim. It seemed like a normal day. I looked up at the sky and I seen the darkness coming. I got an alert on my phone and then all hell broke loose. Oh, it was complete chaos. Go, go. There's no way you can outrun it. If Mother Nature gives you a warning sign, get ready for something big. I've never seen anything like that. I had no idea what had just happened. You just hang on for dear life and hope for the best. Welcome back to our coverage of Tropical Storm Elsa, which made landfall around 11 a.m. in Taylor County, Florida. And you can see the very agitated Gulf of Mexico and the elevated water there splashing up on the coastline. There were some reports of some minor flooding this afternoon, but uh, outside of that, not too many problems. We certainly had some very strong wind. Uh, winds gusting at 65 miles per hour onshore and then some tornadoes as well, which did cause some damage. Always a risk when you have a landfalling tropical cyclone. And right now we're watching that storm uh, coming up into the Savannah area. There is a live look at beautiful downtown Savannah and the winds have been very gusty here. We had a recent wind gust to 40 miles per hour. That is now down to 25 miles per hour. Uh, there you go, a gust to 31 most recently there. And so it is really pouring down rain here and it's going to continue like that for a while. The heaviest band is now coming through. And by the way, we have seen some little areas of rotation within that heavier band. No tornado warnings as of yet, but we certainly could be looking at some of those later tonight. So that center of circulation at the last advisory was uh, there in South Georgia. It's probably a little ahead of that now, uh, right up in about there. Uh, and we'll uh, see an update on that when we get the new advisory that will be coming out here within 40 minutes. And again, that big heavy band of rain now coming up through Savannah, but it's about ready to end. So it's going to continue for a few more minutes and then it will wind down. And you see now that it is headed up towards Hilton Head, going to be moving th up there and then into Beaufort as well, uh, Hunting Island here into Fripp and then across uh, into Edisto. All of those areas are going to be in for that very heavy rain and some really strong wind as that big band of rain comes through. And again, we have seen some little areas of rotation, uh, none of them tightening up enough to uh, bring us a tornado warning, but right there is a little rotation, there's a little rotation, there's a little rotation, there is some. So, so we're seeing a bunch of areas where there is some rotation. It's just not tight enough to warrant a tornado warning right yet.
but there is now a tornado watch in effect for eastern Georgia and also South Carolina. That is going until 5 o'clock in the morning. And that tornado threat will continue into tomorrow as well, up and down the 95 corridor, uh, eastern parts of North and South Carolina, and also southeastern Virginia. So uh, certainly it's been uh, a mess here across parts of the southeast, Mark, and we've got a long way to go, actually, the storm uh, continuing up into the mid-Atlantic region and also into the northeast. Yeah, so that is the Elsa side of the Gulf and then moving up through the Atlantic. But we've been watching the other side of the Gulf as well. A totally, uh, I won't say totally unrelated story, but a different story nonetheless. Soaking storms causing major flooding in parts of the Lone Star State, an upper-level low that was partially responsible for guiding Elsa in was uh, responsible for very heavy rains. Uh, Amarillo had some of these flooding rainstorms over the past couple of days. Some drivers were stranded uh, earlier today. Texas Governor Abbott put state resources on standby, including search and rescue teams because of the flood risk. You can make the argument, though, that the coast is now stealing the headlines. Rockport, Texas, received more than nine and a half inches of rain in just 24 hours. Uh, many roads were closed and we still have flash flood warnings up across portions of the area. Earlier today, right about uh, mid afternoon, it was a flash flood emergency. Still flash flood warnings up though. So there will be water covered roads. We don't want anyone driving around tonight. You just can't tell how deep that water is. But this is the feature that we're watching upper level low right in here and a big counterclockwise spin associated with it kind of broad a little bit tough to pick out. But gosh, look at this. Look at those cold cloud tops that uh, high level of moisture and cold cloud top zone. That is this complex of thunderstorm action, which is still bending its way in and hitting the same areas again and again and again. So let's get a little bit closer into this. We start off where some of the worst of the rain was earlier today, where we had the flash flood emergency, including uh, Oswell and Fulton and Rockport. Considerable flooding and still ongoing flash flood warnings because of it. But nice change, right? No active heavy rain in this warning at the moment. A little bit of light rain trying to kind of bend back in from the coastline, which would absolutely be insult on top of injury rains. However, we're looking in this corridor just east of there, uh, maybe Port O'Connor and then back towards Bloomington. This zone had that rain uh, and the heavier rain a little bit longer. It's now moving north into the areas east of Port O'Connor, uh, and that's also a crucial spot. I'm honestly a little bit surprised that we don't have new flash flood warnings there. Well, we don't have the same amount of rain that we've had. Uh, Fulton had a, a rainfall measurement over a foot, and that was earlier in the day. It's higher than that now, okay? So huge amounts of rain. But why I'm saying that it's a little bit surprising that we don't have more flash flooding in here is because they have the same, have a similar flash flood guidance that within six hours, six hours, all that would be needed would be a half inch of rain, maybe even a little bit less than that to start causing flooding. Those bands coming in absolutely have that. So we need to at least monitor for some of uh, some more flooding. Back to Elsa in just a sec as we follow it out of Georgia and up the coastline. We are following the sights and sounds from Tropical Storm Elsa, awaiting the next advisory, which should come in within about a half an hour or so. That'll give us a full update on the thinking from the National Hurricane Center. Not only the position, but the wind speed and that forecast track. Not really anticipating significant updates or significant changes to the thought process. The uh, model's in good agreement. The thought process has been spot on throughout this storm. But right now, 45 mile per hour winds are still possible as the storm moves north northeast at 14, spiraling in that tropical moisture through coastal Georgia and now entering coastal South Carolina. The Hilton Head area is going to get absolutely slammed with very 
heavy rainfall. You're next in line, maybe with some embedded tornado threats uh, in that kind of corridor from southern South Carolina to coastal Georgia over the next hour or so and stretching out up the South Carolina coast from there. Let's show you what else we know right now with regards to Tropical Storm Elsa. Southeast Georgia's Kings Bay Naval Submarine Base has a tornado touchdown today. An RV park on the base was severely damaged and about 10 people were taken to hospitals by ambulance. Meanwhile, 92 Southeast Georgia counties are under a state of emergency. And to prepare for Elsa's arri arrival, North Carolina has activated its state, uh, state of emergency operations center in the Raleigh area. And I want to bring in storm specialist Carl Parker because, Carl, the Raleigh area is going to see a lot of rain from this when all is said and done. Yeah, I mean, it's going to rain probably just about all day tomorrow. And uh, there certainly could be some flash flood warnings as a result of that. There you see a live look at Savannah right now. The wind's uh, down to 15 miles per hour. So the strongest wind has been coming in with this band of rain. There's a, sort of one big prolific band of rain and that has just now moved out of Savannah. Winds have come down. The uh, visibility has improved. The rainfall rates have obviously dropped some. So it's still going to be raining for a while yet, but I think the worst of it is past you at this point. So uh, there you see what's going on on the radar picture right now and we'll zoom down and give you a better look at what's happening here. You see that a uh, big band of rain that is now coming into uh, areas just north of Savannah about ready to move up into Hilton Head Island in very short order here. So there's Hilton Head Island right there. And then farther north, you've got Beaufort, and then you've got Hunting Island, a beautiful state park there. It's a fantastic beach and no development because it's a state park. So basically, you've got forest and beach. It's really, really pretty. And then there's Fripp and Pritchard beyond that, and then Edisto. So all of these areas are going to be in line for really heavy rain and a lot of lightning and, you know, maybe a tornado warning or two. We've seen a number of areas where there is some rotation. You know, you can broadly see some right in there and you can broadly see some in there. None of it has tightened up to the point. You know, you, oftentimes you'll get some rotation in these storms, but it has to really tighten up to the point where it's uh, worth issuing a, a tornado warning. And we have not seen that for a while. We had some tornado warnings earlier today, some actual tornadoes, but uh, at least right now we're not looking at an imminent threat. However, there is a tornado watch that goes until 5 o'clock in the morning, that for parts of Georgia and South Carolina along that 95 corridor. And again tomorrow, we're going to be looking at a tornado threat just a, a little farther to the north. There's a look at the flash flood threat. And that is going to be significant in South Carolina in particular, again, with that big band of rain. And we can follow that that coming into Charleston in the next couple of hours. And then it's going to be in place probably two to three to four o'clock in the morning. And then we'll get some drying after that and things will improve dramatically. Then you see the rain coming up into Wilmington, into Cape Fear, uh, as well as into Myrtle Beach, starting to come up into the Triangle and into Raleigh. So that's nine o'clock in the morning when the rain is starting there in Fayetteville and Raleigh and along 95, still going strong through the middle of the day and back and into Greensboro and then also into Charlotte and then still going into late afternoon, finally winding down by five to six o'clock. So that's a full day of rain and a lot of heavy rain within that would not be surprising to see some flash flood warnings in and around the Raleigh Metro and then surrounding areas. And then we watch uh, all that come up into the Delmarva and uh, move up into uh, parts of the Northeast as well. Winds recently gusting to 44 miles per hour in Savannah, so it's still gusty uh, even after that band has come through. And here you see the progression of this going through the next couple of hours. Uh, winds continue to be up to about 30, 35 in gusts, and that continues to move up the coast. We'll have much more on this coming up in a few minutes. We've never been so ready. To we are tracking Elsa with a live view right now into Savannah, where one of the biggest bands of rain was rotating right on through. It is really coming down still in Savannah across the river and it's just not a comfortable evening by any stretch. Wind and rain continuing. And so with this view, uh, there's the bridge. You can see the shaking of the camera. 
uh, because of those winds uh, steady at 15, but gusts are higher and then certainly within the heavy rain. And then this is River Street. Luckily has not turned into a river uh, as it can at times. Granted, River Street has a lot of elevation. You have to walk down to get to the water and that protects Savannah overall. There is a lot of elevation change and here's downtown again. You can really see the sheets of rain coming by. Goodness gracious. It is pouring in Savannah. Again, those gusts up to about 25 could see higher than that in some of this band at times. It is really, really rainy uh, right now. Here's a look at the current stats from Elsa. We are roughly 20 minutes away, maybe a little bit less from the uh, 11 o'clock advisory time coming in from the National Hurricane Center. But this is as of 8 o'clock, 45 mile per hour winds, uh, as well as that movement off to the north northeast at 14 an east loaded storm still. So Savannah to Charleston seeing much more of a direct impact than near that center, which certainly has some rain, but it's not the same beast as if you go a little bit farther towards the east. Uh, and that has been the case all along through this storm. You know, it's not just coastal cities endangered by Elsa. We have some images to show you from Lake City, Florida. That's in the central part of the state. Look at the tree damage here. Huge trees, huge root balls letting go because of the saturated grounds uh, outside Gainesville, west of Jacksonville. Trees down, damage to power lines, and residents here say there were some really scary moments. Just came through around 7 o'clock. I just heard a big, big uh, my trailer was shaking. I heard stuff flying all over the place. And, uh, it was just really bad. My shutters, everything, trees falling. Uh, I couldn't see outside. It was still dark, but I could hear the trailer rumble. The whole, the whole down like a train just went all the way down that way. In Jacksonville, reports, uh, unfortunately, of the first U.S. fatality as a result of Elsa. Fire and rescue officials say one person was killed when a tree fell onto two vehicles. A possible tornado knocked down a lot of trees and left debris in the roads, and the power company is reporting some scattered outages in that area. I want to talk a little bit more about where you could still see some active weather across the south right now. We've got the, you know, the center of the storm again as of the 8 o'clock advisory. Center of Elsa back here. Look at all the action towards the coast, though. That's where the meat of the storm has been hanging out. Very heavy rain here. Broad rotation, though. That broad counterclockwise spin is bringing a band of showers as far inland as the Atlanta metro area, walking its way through Atlanta kind of uh, east to west. Uh, and that's how you know it's tied to that counterclockwise spin. It's not with the front that's dropping in from the north because then the rain would be going in the other direction. But this is the big story right now. Very heavy rains uh, near the Savannah area. Let's get a little bit closer in because you could argue that some of the worst of the rain may be ending in Savannah. But this is Tybee. Tybee Island getting absolutely hammered now with very prolific lightning. Uh, we, and we may be able to pause this even and query that amount of lightning for you. Let's see if I can uh, switch this over to lightning and then uh, grab that for you because just in the Tybee Island area, 61 strikes within the past 15 minutes. Impressive amount of lightning just in Tybee. Tybee's pretty small. And for that amount of lightning strike uh, action in the past few moments, you know that it is a highly electrified storm. And it is that very cell that's going to be working its way towards the Hilton Head uh, area also within, you know, the, the next moments to hour. As for the rain that's already occurred, this gives you a an idea of how much rain potential is still possible. These are some of the Doppler radar estimates. And remember, there were some flash flooding, uh, flash flood warnings around the Brunswick area underneath that orange color, four to five inches of rain in that area earlier today. And now we're starting to see those yellow colors increasing between Savannah and Tybee, and it's just beginning to cross over into South Carolina. And that's not the end of the story. We're going to be able to follow this all the way into the Northeast with some big time rains on the way there also, Carl. Yeah, there are actually tropical storm watches now uh, all the way up the coast into parts of the Del Marva, the Jersey Shore, and uh, on up into New England as well. You see all those yellow areas. Oh, we'll get into that in a moment. Uh, first of all, I'll take you into uh, D.C. 
there on the left and New York on the right. So both of these cities could be impacted by the storm. There will be gusty wind in coastal areas in particular, and then a lot of heavy rain. And whenever you add uh, an urban area to the mix, that's when you increase the odds that you'll see some flash flooding. So there you see the tropical storm watches that I mentioned extending from the Carolinas on up into New England, where tropical storm force winds will be possible. There is a look at the timing of this. And so it's going to be coming up uh, into the Delmarva overnight Thursday and then moving into New Jersey and New York on Friday morning. And by the time we get into Friday afternoon, it'll be coming through Boston and then moving uh, rapidly out into Maine and the Canadian Maritimes on Friday evening. So there's a look at the flood watches that are now in effect. Parts of uh, North Carolina, Virginia, the Delmarva, uh, Pennsylvania. Again, you got to really watch out in those Major metro areas, it's just a lot easier to get flash flooding. You don't need as much rain to see flash flooding. And we're looking for a pretty sizable area of two to three inches of rain here. And that is across a good part of New England in particular. Uh, also looking at some wind potential, tropical storm forest winds extending uh, up and along that 95 corridor and uh, all along the coast there in the northeast as well. So we will have much more on ELSA. We've got a new advisory coming up here in uh, within the next 15 minutes. Stay tuned for that. It's early in hurricane season. You know, we're in July. We're already on the fifth name storm of the year. It looks like we're going to have a very active season again. So, again, use this maybe as a dry run, if you will. Did you have the things that you needed? If you didn't have the things that you needed, make sure that you add those things to your supply kit, your supply list, so that if you have to uh, evacuate later into the season, when we get into peak, se peak season in uh, August, September, October, you're ready to respond when you need to. Good advice there for sure. Now, uh, here are some of the latest stats from Tropical Storm Elsa moving its way up the coast. Uh, now, we're moments away from a new advisory, so this position is a little bit back behind, right? We've got three more hours of movement. You can kind of feel where that center is, probably due west of Savannah. But all the action is in Savannah and in Hilton Head and heading towards Charleston. This east loaded storm continues. 45 mile per hour uh, top wind speed right now and that movement continuing to the north northeast at 14. <clears throat> when that 11 o'clock advisory comes in, you'll not only see it on your screen, but you'll get updates from us and we'll go through what it, what is changing. I guess potential for some of the tropical storm watches from up the coast to start transitioning over to tropical storm warnings. We'll have to see uh, it's a it's a you know a function of time, right? So let's talk about uh, where else we're following the 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 ordeal from Elsa because across the Northeast people are cleaning up after a strong line of severe storms uh, unrelated to Elsa, but will it still impact Elsa because Elsa's coming into the same area. Lots of damage so far today. 58 mile per hour wind gusts and heavy rain toppled large trees like the one here in Glen Rock, New Jersey. Tens of thousands of people sit without power. Crews will have to work very fast to clean up and restore power because this same area is, as I mentioned, in Elsa's path. So just not fair. Look at the size of the root ball and that giant tree then leaning on the house. Hopefully uh, didn't go through the roof and into the home. That's always super scary, especially if anyone is on that second level. Uh, the storm is expected to head up the Atlantic coast within the next day or so. And so you're looking live right now towards Atlantic City and then down the road towards Boston. Both areas that are going to have 
potentially direct impacts from Elsa. And this is insult on top of injury because we have an old front draped across the northeast. We've had big storms today. We're going to continue to have some big storms over the next couple of days. And so all of this are uh, that's all power issues because of that stalled out front. Now, a big change in the past hour. Georgia has jumped into the top five states for outages. It, you got to assume that that's near the Savannah area with the copious amounts of rain and wind that we have going on. But for the Northeast, this is an area that's still going to have the chance for severe weather, not because of Elsa yet. This is out ahead of Elsa with some big thunderstorm action. We've got an old boundary right here and storms that are coming up through Pennsylvania and kind of riding along that boundary have a chance of lasting through the evening hours at a minimum and potentially through portions of the overnight. So a severe thunderstorm watch uh, for the next uh, few moments till, uh, you know, five, uh, you know, five minutes or so. But we could certainly see that uh, being extended because this this complex right here is definitely holding its own. Look at the Boeing shape to those storms as it moves on through. That indicates very gusty winds and uh, the model doing a good job at, at picking out that feature already. As we roll this timing forward, look how it holds together. Here's midnight. Here's 3 a.m. and it's still moving into, say, western portions of Massachusetts and then all the way into the morning it goes off the coast. But we're not done because that stalled out boundary is still there. And so we get a chance to kind of reset the atmosphere. Look, it comes out of the Great Lakes by Thursday afternoon. That'll stretch across New England again. All out ahead of Elsa. That is the rain uh, from Elsa. This is all rain because of that boundary and that next little uh, upper level feature that is entering the Northeast Corridor. So several rounds of rain, saturated grounds, then tropical moisture and wind come into play. And so uh, we could have some problems. Problems. Again, first a chance for flooding uh, through Thursday morning and then more come more comes in. So Carl, when the grounds are saturated, especially this time of year, uh, fully leafed out trees, mm -hmm. uh, we're certainly going to see at least some chance for tree damage. No doubt, and there's going to be a good bit of wind uh, all the way up into the northeast in those heavily populated areas uh, along the 95 corridor. So here is a look at the probability of tropical storm force winds, those extending up uh, through the Carolinas and then into the Delmarva and then along the northeast coast and in southeast New England, which sort of juts out there. That's going to be on Friday afternoon. So let's take a look at the timing of this. So we'll go into Thursday and then into Thursday afternoon. The wind's really picking up in Tidewater, Virginia, along the Chesapeake Bay there, Tangiers Island, uh, Chincoteague and Assateague, and then into Salisbury, Maryland, Ocean City, Rehoboth, and up into uh, Lewis and Delaware. All of those areas seeing some pretty strong wind by the time we get into Thursday night. It's not going to quite reach as far as D.C. I mean, it'll be breezy, but it's not going to be as windy as it will be in these coastal areas. Then uh, into Friday early morning, we're still getting some wind on the backside of the low winds gusting 20 to 25, uh, maybe 30 miles per hour in Ocean City. Now, farther northeast up into New England, uh, got light wind for the most part on Thursday. Then we get into Thursday evening and Friday morning. Wind really starts to pick up. I'm going to jump back just a little bit here, and we can see that wind core uh, coming up towards Long Island. That's going to be overnight Thursday and into Friday morning. So some wind gusts probably over 30 miles per hour in Long Island. Uh, Friday early morning before sunrise. Elsa made landfall in the U.S. as a strong tropical storm. Official landfall, Steinhatchee, Florida. That's near Cedar Key, and this is what it looked like. Uh, you're in the washing machine here. Sheets of rain going by, small raindrops getting obliterated by the wind. And look at the street sign there off in the distance doing the flutter back and forth, which is one of those classic tropical system appearances when the wind is howling in. Uh, winds were at 65 miles per hour, a little bit off uh, hurricane strength at that point. A couple of different phases of hurricane in the history of Elsa, but again, came in as a strong tropical storm. And the storm is far from over at this point. Right now, Elsa continues to pound parts of the southeast with strong winds and heavy rain. We're watching for possible tornadoes from Georgia into the Carolinas. And then from there, Elsa is expected to march up the east coast, bringing tropical storm conditions into the northeast including just outside of, say, D.C. and outside New York and into uh, the Boston area and the Cape. So coastal New England will be following this storm as well through Friday. 
The 11 o'clock advisory is now in. And so this is the latest update from the National Hurricane Center. No significant changes on this at first glance. Still 45 mile per hour winds. Uh, still moving north northeast a little bit faster, moving at 16 instead of 14 miles per hour. Pressure has come up just a little bit, holding at uh, about 1,006 millibars and 80 miles northwest of Brunswick, which makes the center is uh, center almost due west of Savannah as well by a little bit farther out. Uh, but the worst of the weather is still on that east side. And so the highly populated corridor from Savannah to Hilton Head to Charleston is going to see the worst of the weather. And we'll continue to break down what this 11 o'clock advisory means for those of you up the coast as we continue our live coverage. We're tracking Elsa. I'm meteorologist Mark Elliott, along with storm specialist Carl Parker. And Carl, this storm's got another day, day and a half to go all the way up the eastern seaboard. New cone has been issued by the National Hurricane Center, and that graphic is coming into our system right now. So let's talk a little bit more about where this storm is now and where it's going next. Well, right now we've seen the, the heaviest of ranges go through Savannah. We saw some winds gusting up to 40 miles per hour along with that, and uh, we're going to see very gusty wind with that band. In particular, there's one really big prolific band that is now coming up into southern parts of South Carolina, and that is the feature that is really going to bring a lot of weather in. So there you see the uh, local radar here will get down even a little bit tighter. The rain has definitely uh, tapered off some in Savannah. will continue for a while yet, but that heaviest band band now coming up across the 95 corridor and not very far away from it's really coming into the southern end of Hilton Head Island. A lot of lightning here as well. So we're going to be looking at some rainfall rates of one to two inches per hour. Very stormy for a time. That's uh, not very far away from Buford here as well as into Hunting Island and uh, Harbor Island down towards Fripp and then across into Edisto. All of those areas getting hit hard by this heavy rain as that moves in. And we have seen winds gusting over 40 miles per hour when the band comes through. That's pretty typical when you've got heavier showers and storms. What they do is they reach up and they grab some of the stronger wind aloft and more easily transport that down to the ground. So oftentimes when the rain does get heavier, you expect to see more wind as well. We have seen little transient features from time to time. There's one right there, little areas of rotation. None have yet risen to the level of a tornado warning in South Carolina, but uh, or it's been a little while in Georgia as well. But certainly we may see some tornado warnings tonight. There's a lot of wind shear in the atmosphere, which is to say that winds are coming out of the southeast at the surface and they're coming out of the south and a lot more quickly at about 5,000 feet. So that turning of the winds in the lowest 5,000 feet of the atmosphere, that creates a rolling motion, and that rolling motion can then get into storms, and that's the beginning of the process that leads to tornadoes. So we've got tornado watches in effect uh, across parts of South Carolina and also into Georgia, that going until 5 o'clock in the morning. So that certainly is something we need to watch out for. Uh, Torcon of 2 tomorrow in the eastern part of North Carolina, also in Tidewater, Virginia. A lot of heavy rain tonight. The greatest threat is going to be in South Carolina again with that big band that is now coming through. And here's the timing of that. That coming into Charleston, 2 o'clock in the morning or so. It's going to be very heavy overnight, 2 to 3 to 4 o'clock in the morning. Columbia getting hit hard. Charlotte getting in on the rain. Watch Raleigh here. 9 o'clock in the morning. It's starting to rain. It continues to rain. All day long. That's one o'clock in the afternoon, still coming down very heavily. Even late afternoon, we're still getting more rain in Raleigh. And then uh, all this comes up and into Tidewater, Virginia, and eventually makes its way towards the Delmarva as well. We're going to talk more about the north in northeast impacts coming up here in just a few minutes. Mark, over to you. But you know, one of the dangers that we often see with hurricanes and tropical storms when they come towards land are tornadoes. And this tornado in particular was very impressive today, uh, partially because of the size here. You don't often see the, you know, the classic wedge tornado from a tropical system. But Carl, we also saw it very clearly using the technology, right? The Doppler radar couplet was strong. The debris signature when this was in progress was strong. That's also reasonably rare from tropical tornadoes, which often are more just a general wind shift and it's enough to get them going. Yeah, I mean, that that looks to be a, a pretty strong tornado. You know, it's going to be very interesting to see 
uh, what the EF rating is in this case, but it is a large tornado certainly, but also still illustrates, you know, part of what makes these tornadoes and tropical systems so dangerous. You know, in the southeast, you've got a lot of tree cover. You tend to have very low cloud bases, and there's a lot of moisture in the air, and so all of that serves to make it all sort of amorphous. I mean, there are moments here we can very clearly see that V shape, but then when it starts to get behind the trees, it's a little bit harder to tell, you know, exactly what you're looking at, especially to an untrained eye. But, you know, people do report hearing the whooshing sound or, you know, the, the freight train is very common. You know, it's funny because there are a lot of eyewitness reports from people who see tornadoes for the first time and they say they intuitively knew that it was a tornado, even though they had never heard anything like that in their lives, mm. they knew that it was a tornado just because it was so strange. It was so outside of their experience. And another view of that same storm. And uh, Carl brought up a good point. Uh, this, while we have a decent view of this funnel right now, it was almost immediately rain wrapped. It almost immediately brought all that rain around the circulation. And so for a while, there are reports of damage continuing with nobody seeing it at that point because it was just such heavy rain. Yeah, you know, so many times these things are going to be rain wrapped and, you know, you know, there's a good example. Like, you know, it's almost, you know, it's really difficult to kind of pick out where it is right there. You know, there's definitely a, a, a darkness off in the distance, but where exactly is that tornado? And so, you know, that's the visibility issue that, you know, extends beyond just tropical systems, but is a problem in the Southeast in general, which is why we say the Southeast has a very high societal vulnerability to tornadoes, much more so than the plains. If the video didn't start here and started towards when that, that uh, tornado was on the right side of the screen, you'd have no idea that that was a tornado moving across the landscape. You know, one of those possible tornadoes blamed for the first Elsa-related death in the U.S. The strong winds knocked down a tree in Jacksonville this afternoon that fell on two cars and killed one person. Meteorologist Tevin Wooten is in Jacksonville with more on the damage there. Well, as Elsa pulls out, we've been left with a slew of damage across the county. I'm meteorologist Tevin Wooten in Duval County, Florida. Downtown Jacksonville right behind me, and so is the St. John's River, which is much calmer than it was earlier today. We picked up close to two and a half inches of rainfall. Still a little bit more to go as we go throughout the evening hours today. And speaking of earlier today, what did we see from Tropical Storm Elsa? Anytime you get a hurricane or a tropical storm even, you always get strong feeder bands or outer rainfall bands that not only produce heavy rainfall, but produce strong squalls of winds as well. We've seen winds between 40 and 50 miles per hour, and look at what it did in terms of damage. Right around 3 o'clock when the first squall came through, we actually saw trees come down in one neighborhood near Roosevelt Boulevard. Unfortunately, that tree fell on two cars, and one person died as a result of that tree falling down. And then around the 5 o'clock hour came the second squall line. This was much stronger, contained winds between 40 and 55 mile per hour for some of the strongest gusts and also a tornado worn storm at that that continued from fruit cove and points towards the north and northeast into southeastern georgia out of that tornado worn storm yes we saw damaging winds we saw heavy rainfall and we also saw this trees that came down near university boulevard and portions of i-95 the trees came down siding strewn about two throughout uh, strewn about as well throughout several apartment complexes and even some roofing too that's just several different sites that we saw throughout portions of northeastern Florida and Jacksonville. First responders and the Jacksonville Fire and Rescue Department still urging residents to stay where they are. Don't necessarily try to get out right now because they've got to clear the debris off the roadway such that things will be easier to pass into tonight and tomorrow. That's the latest here from Jacksonville. I'm meteorologist Tevin Wooten, the Weather Channel. Thanks, Tevin. And uh, Tevin mentioned that storm that then crossed over into Georgia. We've got some new information about a suspected tornado that touched down at the Naval Submarine Base uh, Kings Bay. That's in Georgia. M um, reports of multiple injuries, many taken to medical facilities for treatment. Several RVs in the RV park on the base were damaged. Also reports of damage to buildings on the installation. The tornado, part of, uh, you know, uh, part of the uh, tropical storm, tropical storm Elsa's, it moved through the area, uh, which is often the case. Tropical systems often spawn tornadoes. So this is a tornado that is tied to tropical storm Elsa. Without Elsa, that tornado wouldn't have been there. Now, 
we continue to have a tornado threat tonight. Tornado watch continues overnight until 5 a.m. It's been trimmed back a bit. We've uh, cut off a couple of the counties here as the position has of the low has moved north. The rotation component of the wind profile in the atmosphere has moved north along with it. Uh, but we're still looking at a, a healthy amount of counties here. Uh, coastal Georgia up through coastal South Carolina with a tornado watch until 5 a.m. Here's a look at that wind profile. Now the worst of the wind uh, shift is going to be in this area where right now winds at the surface are coming up like this and then bending their way back towards the area of low pressure. That low is centered right in here. That's our center of our low pressure area. So those blue lines are the surface winds while aloft we suddenly have winds coming up out of the south uh, as opposed to more easterly in that area and that is enough of a spin to give us at least a chance for a couple of storms, which is why we've got this red zone and the chance of a tornado. It's a three out of 10 on the Torcon Carl. So at least a chance of some spin up tornadoes here. Yeah, and we continue to look at the possibility of some flash flooding uh, with this storm. We've had some flash flood warnings uh, through the day today, uh, some of them with the considerable threat tag uh, indicating a life threatening flash flooding situation. That was the case earlier today in Georgia. That is a live look at Sullivan's Island in South Carolina, where the rain uh, really starting to come down and we could get some rainfall rates of uh, one to two to three inches per hour in some of these uh, heavier bands. So there's a look at the rainfall to come and you're talking about uh, two to three inches there across parts of South Carolina and North Carolina going into tomorrow. Uh, the flash flood threat is going to be greatest uh, really here in South Carolina as it's now beginning to wind down in Georgia and we can show you the model forecast and show you how this is going to play out. So, uh, you know, there you go into two o'clock in the morning, the heaviest of rain uh, anywhere from, say, uh, Edisto up into Charleston, coming into Columbia as well. Uh, three to four o'clock in the morning starts to move away from Charleston, coming into Myrtle Beach, uh, raining heavily in Columbia, South Carolina, even reaching all the way up into Greenville. Then nine o'clock in the morning, Cape Fear and Wilmington, Myrtle Beach still getting the heavy rain. The rain's coming up into Raleigh as well. It's going to rain for most of the day tomorrow tomorrow in Raleigh as well as into Charlotte uh, really coming down there in the triangle 1 p.m. Plenty of heavy rain and thunderstorms uh, along the sounds in the Outer Banks and the rain finally begins to move out of Raleigh late in the afternoon and comes up into south central Virginia uh, up into Richmond and into Danville as we go into the dinner hour. So a lot of wet weather on the way and a flash flood threat across the Carolinas along with that. Mark over to you. And we're, you know, we're then going to follow this into the northeast corridor because the northeast is going to see some significant rains on the way from Elsa on top of the rains you've been seeing over the past couple of days. And we'll see through tomorrow leading, uh, you know, well out ahead of Elsa's rain. Uh, D.C., New York, both included in those uh, areas that could see rain because of the tropics. Unbelievable, right? That we're still going to be talking about Elsa all the way up the uh, the New England coastline. Here's a look at that, you know, latter part of the track getting through the Atlantic City area and up towards New York City by sometime Friday early in the day, Friday morning by Friday evening, coastal Maine and then finally saying goodbye through Southeast Canada and into the Canadian Maritimes uh, as we start off the weekend. And you know what? Good riddance because we've been tracking this name for what feels like forever at this point. Now we have a tropical storm uh, position that's going to be crucial because it's close enough to the coast, whether the center is right on the shore or just off the shore or a little bit inland. At that point, it's doesn't really matter much because it's going to be close enough. We're going to see this uh, real long fetch of tropical moisture pointed right back into New England. There's going to be a front that's going to be sweeping this away. So the forward speed is going to be increasing and that's why this thing goes barreling through the northeast, but uh, not fast enough and that low not you know far enough east to protect the east coast from getting any of that tropical rain. So here's a look at the Atlantic City area. You'll see the showers and storms starting to pop up Thursday evening, but it's really overnight leading into Friday with the heavy rain that comes through southern portions of the Jersey Shore. Want to also show you the New York City forecast because here in New York, look at this northern suburbs are going to see a couple of rounds of big storms, uh, not only tonight, but then again tomorrow night. And that's before Elsa. We have all that rain 
approaching from the south leading into your Friday morning commute time. It is going to be pouring Friday morning in the Big Apple. So stay with the Weather Channel and continue to tune in as we track Elsa up the East Coast. Live reports and expert analysis you can't get anywhere else. There's an America we built. Around here, they say if you don't like the weather, just wait a minute. I love to watch the waves after a storm. The storm can be long gone, but the waves just keep going. Ask my history teacher where to go to college. He said, go where you like the weather. Best advice I've ever gotten. Get into the out there. The Weather Channel. Welcome back as we follow Elsa from the Georgia coast to the South Carolina coast. And right now we're looking live in Savannah. Remember, we were telling you about all that very heavy rain, ridiculously fast rainfall rates. Well, right now, our own Charles Peak is up against a, uh, a road. Lots of barricades here. People still driving through, despite the fact that we have two different cars, both with hazards on. Whether they were parked there and the water came up into the electronics and turned those hazards on, or... They tried to drive through and got stuck is impossible to say at this point. But you did see one car go through the water. One got a little bit in and said, nope, and turned back around. That is what we want to see. We'd rather you not get into the drink at all. But if you do encounter that water, turning around and finding a, a dry, safe route is the way to do it because it's nighttime. You just have no sense on how deep that water is. You know that this is a, a vulnerable spot and that this has happened because the caution tape is there. You can see the, the yellow tape there at times. Let's bring in our own Charles Peak, who came upon this scene. Charles, you know, we can only see so much through your camera. What can you see in person? How many cars can you tell that are stuck in this mess? So far, it looks uh, like about based on the side roads I was seeing coming in here, there's probably seven or eight different cars that are stalled out here. Uh, needless to say, based on uh, some of this past, the water's come down uh, considerably from when they stalled out. These are still in some water, but I'm going to assume it was a little even deeper uh, when they got stuck. But you can still see vehicles on the side roads trying to go through, and uh, it, it always amazes me. They see these stalled out cars but think it won't happen to them. Can you tell if anyone is still inside these vehicles, or have they been there long enough that police have gotten everybody out of, the, out of harm's way? I think it's safe to say, I can see at the very far end of fire department, uh, this section here is probably, I'm going to say, uh, half a mile where it's flooded here uh, with multiple cars along it. Uh, but they have uh, these caution tape where they put up on both sides, uh, law enforcement left as I was pulling up. So uh, I feel pretty comfortable that uh, they've already been out there and checked on these people and uh, uh, then put the caution tape trying to keep other people from driving into it. And then is that a tow truck approaching or an emergency vehicle? It's hard to do. All we see is a big yellow blob coming our way. <laughs> uh, for me, it's, I, I know the colors get a little weird. It's uh, red. Uh, I don't know what Georgia laws are on tow trucks. Uh, if it's a fire, it looks more like a fire vehicle uh, based on the red lights I'm seeing. And then, you know, you were traveling into the Savannah area throughout the late evening hours, kind of as that burst of heavy rain was arriving. What was that like? Uh, how, were you able to see through your windshield at all? Yeah, I was able to see a little bit, but you know, needless to say, I had to slow down uh, 
uh, most vehicles, uh, you know, had their hazards on and, uh, and as they were going down the road. Uh, uh, but uh, it was very treacherous for a little bit, and uh, you just slow down and take it easy, and uh, uh, you can safely get there on the interstates. But, you know, they're built in most cases where they're going to drain very well in these type of flash flood situations. Uh, but these side streets and roads like here, uh, Abercorn uh, Street here, uh, well, between 61st, East 61st, and maybe East 66th Street, uh, uh, they don't have the kind of drainage, and uh, so the water goes to the lowest spot, and, and this is what you get. And these vehicles, Mark, are actually, I mean, they're in the middle of the road here. Uh, they didn't park, and it just came up around them. Uh, they drove into it, mm. and this is this is what they got stuck with. Yeah, insurance claim at a minimum. Uh, hopefully everybody wound up getting out of the car safely. Uh, what do you want people to know, Charles? Uh, this same line has exited Savannah for the worst of the rain, but is now right over Hilton Head. It's headed towards the uh, Beaufort, South Carolina area. What should people be expecting as this, you know, very heavy rain moves their way? Well, what I think happens a lot, and I see it all over the country uh, in this particular area because it's very flat, uh, you know, what happens is, is you probably could drive your car through it from a perspective of the, the car would make it, but you don't realize your air intakes, especially on these smaller cars, are down low, and then it sucks that water up into the engine, and then you've got, at the very least, a very expensive bill, if not totaled your car. Uh, you know, no, you may not have been in a situation that you were going to lose your life, but uh, becomes a very expensive situation. But sometimes you don't know if that happens. You don't know that it's going to be six foot deeper water in five minutes, and uh, it can turn into a very dangerous situation. So this, when you see it, even though you think you make and drive through it, turn around. It, it's just uh, the smarter move. Yeah, use this as an example. Cars getting stuck at night in high water. We say it again and again and again. There are extra dangers on the road at night. Nobody has to be out uh, traveling through this, and uh, you know, unless they are the emergency responders. That's Charles Peak reporting for us tonight. Charles, we'll check back in with you in a little bit. Thank you so much for that report, and stay safe and dry out there. Meanwhile, that uh, storm that we mentioned moving north and east is now under a severe thunderstorm warning, including. Uh, uh, you know, South Carolina, so it's Beaufort, uh, Calton, and Jasper. Hilton Head is included in this. Very heavy rain, gusty winds up to at least 60, and very frequent lightning. Big lightning jump here, uh, suggesting a stronger updraft, and what goes up must come down. Eventually, those strong winds come down to the surface also. So now DISH allows you to access your Google Nest Hello doorbell from your TV. Which If you're just tuning in, the 11 o'clock advisory is in from the National Hurricane Center. Still a tropical storm, Tropical Storm Elsa moving north northeast at 16 miles per hour with a top wind speed of 45. Those are the sustained winds associated with the circulation. However, in some of these thunderstorms, there are the there is and there have been higher winds than that in gusts in the thunderstorm. So like any severe thunderstorm, you can certainly see stronger winds and we're going to continue to see that tonight. So keep that in mind. It is the gusts that often bring down the trees, not necessarily the sustained winds, especially with winds of this nature, but those gusts, those higher bursts could continue to bring down trees and power lines this evening. Let's bring you up to speed again. If you're just tuning in the latest on Tropical Storm Elsa, there has been a US death from Elsa that happened earlier today when a tree fell on two cars in Jacksonville, killing one person. Georgia's Kings Bay Naval Submarine Base says a tornado came through. An RV park on the base was severely damaged. About 10 people were taken to hospitals by ambulance. And we also have about 15,000 customers now without power in Georgia, partially because of the tornadoes earlier, but also because of the very gusty winds that moved through the Savannah area and the surrounding communities. 
with the thunderstorms that are now moving into South Carolina. So expect the South Carolina numbers to increase with regards to power outages. Speaking of the heavy rain that we saw in Savannah, these are live images coming to us from Savannah. Just spoke with Charles Peak, who told us that between this street and some of the side roads around it, somewhere around seven, maybe eight cars at a minimum stalled out in high water as that line came through. So overwhelmed the storm drains and we had uh, water up to at least the intake of the vehicle's engines. That air intake got covered up in water and that's a recipe for stalling out your car, uh, an insurance claim and a repair bill on the way at a minimum. At, you know, the worst case scenarios, you're putting yourself and the first responders lives in jeopardy. And so please be careful tonight. The risk is not done from this tropical storm. I want to bring back storm specialist Carl Parker watching this go into South Carolina with some very gusty winds. Yeah, we're seeing a very strong wind threat locally now with a severe thunderstorm warning in effect that is northeast of Savannah does include Hilton Head Island. Let's zoom on in and give you the latest on that. So that is Beaufort, Colleton and Jasper counties under warning and that cell is moving northeast at 45 miles per hour. There is a warning here for 80 mile per hour wind and we did get a report on Hilton Head Island of a wind gust to 80 miles per hour and we are seeing some velocities of that nature with this storm. So it, it is really packing a punch here. That is going to be coming up into Laurel Bay more immediately. Beaufort at 1137, Dale at 1144, Chisholm at 1150 and Bennett's Point at 1156. And let's take a look at the velocities here. So uh, what's happening here is the radar is picking up the wind where the very strong wind is that is now coming across Hilton Head Island and you know you've got a pretty good shot at bringing these velocities down to the ground if you've got uh, very heavy rain which we are seeing here look at that that's an inbound velocity of 81 miles per hour and in a tropical system you've got really strong wind aloft and what thunderstorms can do is they can reach up and they can grab some of that wind and bring it down to the ground so again we got a report of 80 mile per hour wind we're seeing that in the velocities this is a very mean storm that is now coming through uh, moving through Hilton Head Island right now it's going to be coming up towards Paris Island before too long here uh, you see Beaufort right in there you'll be getting in on the strong wind uh, there is Harbor Island right there uh, Fripp Island as well, Pritchard Island, all of these areas are going to be in line for some really strong wind in short order as again this is moving northeast at 45 miles per hour. And then as you look farther out, we are seeing some little areas of rotation as well. Uh, there's a little pinpoint right there, could be a water spout, some other broader areas of rotation right there, right there, and right there, and then right there. So there's definitely rotation showing up uh, out of the open water right now. So there too. I'd be concerned about the possibility of some water spouts coming on shore. There is a tornado watch in effect that going until five o'clock in the morning includes much of southern South Carolina and southeastern parts of Georgia as well. So an ongoing threat for tornadoes and also very heavy rain. You see what has come down here in the last six hours, widespread amounts of three to four to five inches. So you have diabetes. Welcome back to our continuing coverage of Tropical Storm Elsa. We're watching the Savannah area live right now. Worst of the very heavy rain has moved on from Savannah, but the implications from that heavy rain are still ongoing. We just talked with Charles Peak, who found a, a corridor, a street there with what, seven, eight cars stalled out in heavy rain. Still watching this camera bouncing around in the wind just a bit as we look out towards the bridge, but good visibility of that bridge compared to where we were uh, when you could barely see anything at all. And so uh, here's a, a River Street again, and uh, again, much better view of the area. We have, uh, you know, views of the building and the lights now, whereas an hour ago, we could not even see across the street. It was pouring that hard. So again, a lot better things improving in the Savannah area, but it's not the only threat that we've been following. The rain is one thing. Severe weather threat is another. Tornado watch continues until 5 a.m. And uh, on this kind of fringe of the tornado watch area away from the coast, we have a brand new tornado warning to tell you about. It's near Sylvania. 
in Screven County radar indicated rotation here and it's you know on this uh, mode of the radar it doesn't look like much right kind of a classic uh, tropical tornado warning in that way it, you know this is a supercell it's all on its own in one of these bands but you have to change the mode of the radar and even at that it's not the super strong red green couplet that you associate with severe season in the plains instead it's the kind of reds and yellows switching over to the deep red to brown and sometimes that's just enough that's just enough rotation to suggest that we could have a tornado spinning up here it's also pointed in the opposite direction than you would normally be seeing for storms generally in this part of the world because of our, our rotation around our, uh, you know, our area of low pressure from Elsa is going counterclockwise. This storm is moving this way towards Sylvania and across 301. Let's quickly just check and see if the radar is seeing anything being lofted into the air. No clear sign of any debris at this point. That is excellent news. But again, the potential is there for a tornado, and that's why that tornado warning was issued for that radar indicated spin. I can quickly show you the uh, larger environment. Why are we seeing that chance for tornadoes when we have a tropical system moving through? Well, again, here's our low. The low is over here. The low level winds rotating counterclockwise around that feature are coming in like this, backing their way towards our area of low pressure. But you go aloft and suddenly you've got this wind uh, coming up out of the south and that turn is enough. So with that in mind, we have some more tornadoes to tell you about right now. There's the Sylvania one and let's go now into the South Carolina side embedded within the, uh, you know, the, the severe thunderstorm warning that we've been tracking that had the chance of 80 mile per hour gusts. Now we have some rotating winds as well. So this over Beaufort and Jasper, there are several different spots in here that could have water spouts. OK, this could be one or two or three to tell you the truth. This may be one and this I think is probably what's triggering the warning because we're getting towards land again. But any one of those points could be a, a water spout coming coming ashore and then that would qualify as a tornado. Again, very classic presentation for these tropical induced tornado warnings that you have a, you know, a fleeting moment of rotation where the, in this case, the greens are kind of merging to blue or the reds are merging to dark red. It's not a classic red green couplet. That's just not how these often present themselves. Let's uh, loop this for you just a bit so you can see the motion of that rotation and we had that uh, kind of working its way up from the south. So these are all moving inland. Uh, and so that's why this uh, tornado warning has been issued. Uh, tornado uh, rotation potential as seen by the Doppler radar. You will not see this if you are in person, even if this were the middle of the afternoon. The, uh, those pinpoints, what was here, here and here? Good luck embedded completely within the shroud of very heavy rains. And then on top of that, we have straight line winds blasting through this area that could be anywhere from 60 to close to 80 miles per hour. So there is no chance that you will see this uh, with your naked eye. Please respect the warnings and put as many walls between you and the storm as possible. Remember, this is Hilton Head. Sea Pines is down here with those huge, huge pine trees all over. And then there's also a, a very, you know, uh, forested uh, landscape across this portion of South Carolina. I know it's a coastal plain, but it doesn't mean it's all, you know, sporadic palm trees. There are some big trees, and so tree damage and power line damage looking more and more likely. So again, a South Carolina tornado warning near Hilton Head and points just north North and a Georgia tornado warning uh, near the Sylvania area. One more quick look at the rotation from there. Again, uh, reds merging to the deep red, uh, showing us that chance for a tornado. This one moving inland and towards 301. No sign of any debris as of last check and still no sign at this point. So we can continue to make our way over towards the uh, coast where we have a severe thunderstorm warning and this tornado warning. And again, this is Hilton Head right in here. That's Hilton Head Island. And so what we're watching are these little pinpricks of rotation that are now working their way on land. One is there. 
one is there and a cluster of them still off the coast and moving in as they continue to race their way inland. Any one of those could give us a tornado, and that's why we've got that uh, warning as issued by the local National Weather Service office. If you're in the Beaufort area, you got to monitor those. Let's hope that they don't hold together that far inland. Very often, these are kind of fleeting features that are there for a few moments and then gone. So not a guarantee that you won't get that tornado warning. Uh, tornado all the way into the Beaufort area, but let's hope that uh, it, it falls apart before then. We'll give you updates on the storm uh, coming back up right after this. You guys got any signal? I've only got one bar, Dad. Experience hybrid performance that takes you further. Anything? I've got nothing. Perfect. At the Lexus Golden Opportunity Sales Event. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. Oh, are you using Liberty Mutual's coverage customizer tool? So you only pay for what you need. Sorry? Lemo, you're an animal! Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Okay, everyone. Our mission is to provide complete balanced nutrition for strength and energy. Yay! Insure with 27 vitamins and minerals. Now introducing Insure Complete with 30 grams of protein. This is our shot. The COVID-19 vaccines are ready. And so is Walgreens, with pharmacy experts ready to make it easy for you to get it safely for free. Because this is our shot at getting back together. Good morning. More treatment. We're going to try something different today. Oh, it's so pretty. Dogs bring out the good in us. Pedigree brings out the good in them. There's an America we build and one we discover. One that's been tamed and one that's forever wild. But freedom means you don't have to choose just one adventure. You get both. Introducing the wildly civilized, all-new, three-row Jeep Grand Cherokee L. I love it. The technology is easy. I just wear a little sensor, and that's it. The Dexcom sends my glucose readings to my receiver every five minutes, and I can also get it on my smartphone. It's totally private. No one knows. Now it's easier being able to see what your numbers are at any time of the day. You don't have to prick your fingers at all. It's amazing. It really helps you take control of your life. Have you been thinking about learning a new language? Welcome to Babbel. Created by language experts, Babbel's lessons are built around teaching you real life conversations. Salut Finn, tu vas bien? Oui, je suis à Paris pour le weekend. With 15 minutes a day, you can start speaking confidently in a few weeks. Salut, Finn. Comment ça va? Très bien, merci. Et toi? Babbel. Start learning today at babbel.com. It seemed like a normal day. I got an alert on my phone, and then all hell broke loose. Oh, it was complete chaos. Go, go! Mother Nature gives you a warning sign. Get ready for something big. You just hang on for dear life and hope for the best.
tropical systems can and often do spawn tornadoes. Tornado watch continues along uh, portions of Georgia into the South Carolina coast until 5 a.m. But maybe more pressingly, Tornado warnings have been issued. Want to get in first to the South Carolina coastline. This is a complex of thunderstorms that has been barreling northbound, uh, looking at Hilton Head up through the Beaufort area of South Carolina. Very gusty winds for everyone within that thunderstorm complex, maybe up to close to 80 miles per hour. But there's also some rotation. Couple it right in this area where the kind of the blue green is going towards the radar and the uh, the red is going away from the radar. So that's our counterclockwise spin right now. This was coming out of the Hilton Head Air Island area and kind of coming this way and then it's going to curl its way a little bit more northbound and then northwest as the uh, you know as it feels some of that low level spin and flow around our area of low pressure. And so timing this out for you uh, could clip the Beaufort area. I want to redraw this for you because I think the I have a, a little bit of a of an incorrect uh, direction. Let's kind of ca call it like this. Uh, and so heading towards Beaufort by say a little bit after midnight on either side of midnight. That's when this rotation could be coming towards you if it holds together that long. I say if because sometimes these tropical induced tornadoes have a real hard time once they get on land. It was OK uh, near the uh, near the airport. In fact, I can show you what it looked like near Hilton Head Island Airport right in there. That was probably our best couplet right here. Uh, the blues right next to that kind of deep deep green, almost red. Then stepping this forward, you can see that it came across the water, opened up a little bit. Now we've got that couplet that's right up against land again, right in here. And uh, here's our most latest. That is our most latest scan, our latest scan. So reissuing this warning. So let's take a brand new update, brand new look at that warning as it's flashing for us. Now tornado warning until 1215, continuing for Beaufort and Jasper. Believe it or not, it's not the only warning that we're following. We also have a tornado warning on the Georgia side, just west of the South Carolina border, right over the Sylvania area. This has been trimmed just a bit as our circulation, as seen by the Doppler radar system, continues to make its way westbound. That's right, moving generally east to west. Now, there's not that much to be seen here uh, from this radar site with regards to rotation. It's kind of a wind shift, if you will, right in here where that kind of yellow to red switches to the deep red. Sometimes that's just enough to give us a tornado. Uh, this whole environment is suggestive of tornadoes because our area of low pressure is here. Low level winds coming in like this all the way up through, say, uh, Hilton Head to Charleston. Uh, but the winds aloft at about a mile up are coming in more like this. And so that uh, change with uh, direction with height is enough to kick up some tornadoes. And I think that trend is going to continue over the next several hours with these little spin up tornadoes across uh, portions of the Georgia and South Carolina coast. You could make the argument that the most pressing of which is this one leaving Hilton Head Island and about to come through uh, the rest of coastal South Carolina towards the Beaufort area. Uh, tornado warning until 1215 embedded within very heavy rain. You'd never see this coming. Plus it's nighttime. So please respect the warning. The lowest level of your building, putting as many walls between you and the storm as possible. If nothing else, Carl, we know that there's very gusty straight line winds here that could be enough to take down trees uh, that I wouldn't want to be on the second floor of my building right now with the giant trees that are featured in coastal por portions of coastal South Carolina. Yeah, this is the most active band that we've seen in a couple of hours now and uh, a whole slew of warnings associated with it. And we'll uh, get back to that in just a moment. We want to take you into the northeast and show you where we go from here. And you've got uh, a warning here. Uh, tropical storm warnings extending all the way up now into the mid-Atlantic region as we're expecting a tropical storm in those areas that's going to be coming through late tomorrow and then into early Friday and then beyond that racing out 
into the Canadian Maritimes. And so here you see the update as of the 11 p.m. advisory tropical storm warnings uh, now up into the Chesapeake Bay, into the Delmarva, along the uh, Tidewater, Virginia area. Much of eastern North Carolina, it's going to be a really gusty late day tomorrow in the sounds and in the Outer Banks and then also up into the Jersey Shore uh, expecting some very strong wind. So uh, here's the model forecast. I'm going to step back uh, just a couple of frames here and we can look at uh, where it is at 11 p.m. There's the system right there, the strong wind coming across Tidewater, Virginia, then moving across the bay and the Delmarva overnight by 8 o'clock in the morning. That low pressure center, that tropical storm likely along the Jersey Shore. So some very strong wind coming into the well, into Long Island uh, through the morning and then rapidly moving out into New England. Five o'clock in the afternoon, uh, probably north of Boston and going into down east Maine and then beyond that again uh, moving out into the Canadian Maritimes. There is going to be a pretty widespread flash flood threat and the rain is going to go on pretty much all day in Raleigh tomorrow. So flash flood uh, looms large there. Flash flood potential looms large there around the Triangle and up through southeast Virginia, as well as into uh, parts of the mid-Atlantic region and the northeast. Keep in mind, of course, that it doesn't take as much rain to get flooding in New York and Philly and D.C. because there is so much asphalt and concrete. And we're going to have much more on this dangerous storm coming up in just a few minutes. The Capital One Venture Car. You were an up. Welcome back to our coverage of Tropical Storm Elsa. We are watching what is now a very dangerous situation as there are a number of warnings in effect, tornado warnings and severe thunderstorm warning as well for 80 mile per hour winds in coastal South Carolina. Let's get right down and show you the latest on those warnings. That tornado warning in effect for Beaufort County and Jasper County going until 1215 and we're watching an area of rotation that is near Beaufort right now, sitting about right in there and moving towards the north northwest West at 40 miles per hour. It's not quite as well formed as it was moments ago, but that coming up towards uh, that's going to be in Port Royal right now and then moving into Burton beyond that Grays Hill and Coosa beyond that. So a possible tornado coming your way. But again, that circulation not quite as well formed as it was moments ago. But you look farther south here and there's another circulation that is showing up on Pritchard's Island right there. This is a uh, Harbor Island, Hunting Island. You've got Fripp right in there and and there you get into Frogmore and Beaufort and you've got another rotation right there that is not being worn on actually just sitting outside of that uh, polygon. Another rotation there and uh, some other areas that look like they might rotate as well. So uh, that is the nature of storms like this in a tropical cyclone. You tend to get uh, little areas of spin developing that are very fleeting in nature. They tend not to last very long, but uh, certainly there could be serious tornadoes. We've seen that already today and then along the leading edge of this big thunderstorm here. It's interesting because the tornadoes themselves have been moving more towards the north, but the leading edge of this big band is now moving off towards the northeast. And along with that, there is a threat for 80 mile per hour winds. We actually got a report of 80 mile per hour wind on Hilton Head Island, and that is going to be coming into Chisholm and uh, near the top of the hour, Wiggins 1208, and then uh, Edisto Beach here at 1216. So Chisholm right now, I should say, and uh, coming into Edisto Beach at 1216. Very strong wind headed your way, and that is now uh, just off to the southwest of Harbor Island, which is right in there. Some very strong wind and very heavy rain uh, now moving in, and this is pretty typical in a tropical storm because you've got really strong wind aloft, and when you get a thunderstorm like that, you can bring that down to the ground. We did have a tornado warning that was uh, also in Georgia. That has been allowed to expire, but you've got an atmosphere that is favorable for tornadoes because the winds are coming out of different directions at different levels of the atmosphere, out of the east, southeast at the surface, and out of the south at about 5,000 feet up. And that turning of the winds creates a spin when the storms are strong enough. And we're certainly seeing that now coming into areas between Savannah and Charleston. So there is a tornado watch that is going until 5 o'clock in the morning across 95 into southern parts of South Carolina and uh, also into parts of Georgia as well. 
Another big story tonight has been the really heavy rain with the storm. That is a huge area of three to five inches of rain from Hilton Head on southward uh, right down into Brunswick. We're going to see a lot more of that tonight. We'll see the ongoing tornado threat, the ongoing heavy rain threat. There you see the storms coming into Charleston as well as into Columbia. Uh, that continues to lift up two to four o'clock in the morning in Charleston, then into Cape Fear, into Wilmington tomorrow morning. Want you to pay attention to Raleigh if you're in the Triangle or in Fayetteville. It is going to rain for a lot of the day tomorrow because you're going to get right through the core of that storm. So it starts in the morning, continues through the middle of the day tomorrow. We see rain also in the sounds and the outer banks and then even if through the afternoon and then finally begins to move out about five, six o'clock in the evening. And then here you see that heavy rain coming up into the Delmarva tomorrow and into Philadelphia and into New York as well. So in those areas, there is going to be a flash flood threat uh, with that heavy rain coming through. That is going to be through the afternoon primarily as the storm continues to lift off to the north. So a lot going on with this thing. We're a long way from being over with it, Mark. Uh, we've got uh, plenty more to be concerned about. And, you know, you see how they sort of wax and wane in intensity. We went for a couple of hours without much going on, and now uh, suddenly we're into a whole series of warnings. Yeah, and that uh, is uh, pretty typical with these tropical systems as well. It's now getting into that environment that's much more favorable for spin, and so we're seeing the spin kicking up. And we had a different round of that earlier today. Tornadoes blamed for the first U.S.-related Elsa death in the U.S. Uh, the strong winds knocked down a tree in Jacksonville, Florida uh, this afternoon that fell on two cars and killed one person. Meteorologist Tevin Wooten is in Jacksonville where some of those tornadoes came through. He's got more information on the damage there. Well, as Elsa pulls out, we've been left with a slew of damage across the county. I'm meteorologist Tevin Wooten in Duval County, Florida. Downtown Jacksonville right behind me, and so is the St. John's River, which is much calmer than it was earlier today. We picked up close to two and a half inches of rainfall. Still a little bit more to go as we go throughout the evening hours today. And speaking of earlier today, what did we see from Tropical Storm Elsa? Anytime you get a hurricane or a tropical storm even, you always get strong feeder bands or outer rainfall bands that not only produce heavy rainfall, but produce strong squalls of winds as well. We've seen winds between 40 and 50 miles per hour, and look at what it did in terms of damage. Right around 3 o'clock when the first squall came through, we actually saw trees come down in one neighborhood near Roosevelt Boulevard. Unfortunately, that tree fell on two cars, and one person died as a result of that tree falling down. And then around the 5 o'clock hour came the second squall line. This was much stronger, contained winds between 40 and 55 mile per hour for some of the strongest gusts and also a tornado worn storm at that that continued from Fruit Cove and points towards the north and northeast into southeastern Georgia. Out of that tornado worn storm, yes, we saw damaging winds. We saw heavy rainfall. And we also saw this trees that came down near University Boulevard and portions of I-95. The trees came down, siding strewn about too, throughout, uh, strewn about as well throughout several apartment complexes and even some roofing too. That's just several different sites that we saw throughout portions of northeastern Florida and Jacksonville. First responders and the Jacksonville Fire and Rescue Department still urging residents to stay where they are. Don't necessarily try to get out right now because they've got to clear the debris off the roadway such that things will be easier to pass into tonight and tomorrow. That's the latest here from Jacksonville. I'm meteorologist Tevin Wooten, the Weather Channel. Thanks, Tevin, for that report. And we have some new information about a tornado that came through Georgia, touched down at the Naval Submarine Base Kings Bay in Georgia. Uh, there are reports of multiple injuries, many taken to medical facilities for treatment, as several RVs in the RV park on the base were damaged, and that's where some of the injuries occurred. There are also reports of damage to buildings on the installation. And of course, that tornado tied to the circulation from Elsa as it moved through the area. And it's the same complex of storms that continues to move north through uh, Savannah and Tybee earlier, now through Hilton Head and uh, the Beaufort region. Speaking of, this is some video from Tybee Island as those storms came through. Gosh, it was really raining. You had some lightning. In fact, there were reports uh, from the lightning detection network of, you know, upwards of 60 to 70 lightning strikes in a 15 minute period right over Tybee. That's a lot of lightning over a relatively small island. It was pretty constant out there. And gosh, you can just see the sheets of rain. there going sideways across the street there and over the building, the lights of the uh, of the island uh, island style 
uh, shop, really illuminating that rain uh, blasting forward. Also, we've got some video from the Savannah area. Check out the rain here. I mean, it's just pouring like a wave over that parked car. So if you look at the lower left part of your screen underneath that street light, the rain is hitting the side of the car and then getting swept up and over like a breaking wave from the ocean. That is wild, seeing that amount of water that quickly. That's how so many drivers in the Savannah area got themselves into trouble earlier this, uh, this evening. Uh, when the rainfall rates were like this, had a couple of streets that, you know, really filled up in a big way. And uh, Charles Peak was in the area, said uh, he saw seven or eight cars stalled out in that high water. Uh, rescue crews, police vehicles, and fire uh, crews were nearby, roped off the main access to the street, but there were still side roads where people were still trying to come back through, and a couple then went through the water. Crazy when that can happen. Want to give you an update on where that nasty line of storms is right now and where the severe weather threat is. We've got a tornado watch that continues until 5 a.m. Uh, this is the Georgia side. This is the South Carolina side. And, uh, you know, in particular, we're looking at this zone of a tornado warning over portions of Beaufort and Jasper. Uh, remember, Hilton Head Island is right here. Beaufort is right up here. And we have a storm that basically started near Hilton Head uh, Island Airport and is then moving in north, maybe a little bit of a northeast component at times, and you can make the argument that the straight line doesn't do it. It was kind of doing something more like this, uh, kind of bending its way through, which makes sense considering the counterclockwise flow around our storm. The good news here is that that couplet looks much less pronounced. In fact, the warning just expired. So it's not going to drop off from our, uh, our, our graphic system because it was close to that kind of expiration time. But check this out. As we roll this back, look at this. This is our couplet coming from Hilton Head Island. So it was here where the red-green uh, couplet is kind of blue to deep green. That's what we're looking at in this tropical-induced tornado warning. Move that forward, and then it was here. We can move that forward again, started moving more north towards the uh, Beaufort area, and then finally opening up as it was approaching Beaufort itself and really fizzling out. That is excellent news. Looking down the line, as we look off the coast a bit, there's another couple of these, one here and one here, that are looking a little bit more organized. It's easier over the water. Sometimes these get right to land and then fizzle out. Sometimes they make it a little bit inland, as you saw with that uh, you know, couplet that we just uh, analyzed going from Hilton Head Airport towards the Beaufort area. But those are ones that we'll need to watch. And then approaching the Edisto Beach area. Also, don't forget, we've got this whole area of yellow outlined. That is a severe thunderstorm warning. That complex is going this way with as much as 80 mile per hour winds with it. So Carl, the Edisto Beach area could see that part of the story slam into them, maybe 80 mile per hour winds on the way. Yeah, and a lot of very heavy rain on top of that. And uh, that has been one of the huge stories for tonight. Here you see the live, uh, live look at what's going on in Savannah, Georgia as there is a road that has been closed due to water across it. And Charles Peak showing us earlier a uh, number of cars that had stalled out, uh, folks who had driven into high water there as we had rainfall rates of two to three inches per hour coming across Savannah. It has thinned out considerably, but that is what you expect with a tropical storm. Notice that you've got this spin that is coming up across North Florida right now and moving into eastern parts of Georgia and now, uh, or excuse me, was coming across North Florida earlier today and uh, moving right up the 95 corridor and just this big swirling mass of rain with very high rainfall rates. And so large areas getting more than three inches of rain today, three to four to five inches of rain, southeast Georgia, Brunswick into Jekyll Island there and then up 
off the coast into Savannah as well. Uh, there's a closer look at what's happened in the last six hours. And so from Savannah on eastward to Hilton Head, that is a really sizable area that has gotten more than three inches of rain. And when you get that kind of a rainfall in a short period of time, you're going to end up uh, getting flash flooding. So there's the leading edge of that main band of rain that is producing the severe weather threat and the tornado threat as well. That coming towards Walterboro. It's going to be moving up into Somerville and into Charleston. A lot of concern about what's going to be happening in Charleston overnight tonight. There is where flash flooding is likely through the overnight and into tomorrow morning in southeastern South Carolina. And then here you see the rain still to come. Uh, model indicating we've got a pretty widespread area of three inches plus of rain there in southeastern South Carolina. So this massive rain coming up into Charleston in short order. It's going to be going on through two to three o'clock in the morning, then beginning to wind down in Charleston about at about four o'clock in the morning, moving up then into Cape Fear and Wilmington tomorrow morning. And it is going to be a very wet day in Raleigh, North Carolina tomorrow. Mark uh, rain coming down for most of the day in Raleigh. And let's continue the story from there, right? Let's follow that same storm, Elsa, all the way into the northeast. How much of the D.C. metro area will see very heavy rain? Uh, certainly the east side of the uh, of the D.C. metro. And then you go up towards New York. New York is going to see some very heavy rain. Friday morning's commute in New York City looks horrible. Uh, there's no other way to put it. It is going to be pouring the entire window of your morning commute. Afternoon commute looks fine. So if you can somehow work from home still for Friday or maybe delay your trip into the city, I think that'll help you out a lot. Here's the rest of that cone. Uh, it'll be passing through or near the Jersey Shore early Friday, right over New York City Friday morning, uh, Boston Friday afternoon, coastal Maine by Friday evening, and then finally exiting through Southeast, uh, Southeast Canada and into the uh, Canadian Maritime times and good riddance because we've been following Elsa for forever. Now we've got an area of uh, moisture that's going to be pulled in by this tropical storm and by the you know the circulation around it. Uh, uh, you know a very efficient positioning to actually tap into that deep tropical moisture and throw it back towards the I-95 corridor. I think we're going to see some pretty hefty rainfall rates. It might not be raining long in any one location because this upper level low is swinging in that upper level trough anyway is coming in and that's going to really ac uh, accelerate the forward speed. So let's hope that you know we kick this forward pretty quickly. But here's Atlantic City. We'll watch Thursday morning and Thursday afternoon a couple of showers arriving. It's really Thursday evening with the first batch and then overnight Boom, it starts pouring on you and it continues overnight all the way up through the morning commute time, but it starts to get better. Now that's Atlantic City, but let's go to New York City, New York City overnight tonight. We've had storms north of town. We'll have another round of that for Thursday afternoon and Thursday evening. Look what happens Thursday overnight into Friday morning. Here's 5 a.m. Uh, in the Big Apple, six, seven, eight, still pouring. It doesn't clear out till say two or three. So again, the drive home looks much better. We'll be right back. When it comes It seemed like a normal day. I looked up at the sky and I seen the darkness coming. I got an alert on my phone and then all hell broke loose. Oh, it was complete chaos. Go, go. There's no way you can outrun it. If Mother Nature gives you a warning sign, get ready for something big. I have never seen anything like that. I had no idea what had just happened. You just hang on for dear life and hope for the best.
Welcome back to our coverage of Tropical Storm Elsa, which made landfall around 11 a.m. in Taylor County in Florida. And that was the scene uh, just south of there in Cedar Key, uh, churning waves there in the Gulf of Mexico. And you can see it uh, splashing up uh, over the, uh, the berm there. It certainly was uh, a little bit of a flooding situation along the coast, not a widespread major flood, but there was some minor coastal flooding and then an angry Gulf of Mexico on top of that. Winds gusting to about 65 miles per hour, and we had some tornadoes today, including a pretty serious one outside of Jacksonville. And here is a live look at Savannah, Georgia. The rain has been very intense tonight. Uh, live pictures from Charles Peak. We've seen a number of people uh, actually getting stuck in high water, and it looks like a lot of that is now beginning to recede. So we've got a band that's coming through, and along with it, uh, two to three inch per hour rainfall rates on the high end, and there is a severe threat as well. Uh, let's tell you about this severe thunderstorm warning that is ongoing right now, and that is for Buford, Colleton, and Jasper counties. Leading edge of this storm is now just about out of that polygon. Let's see if they uh, are going to issue a downstream warning, but uh, we've been looking at the potential for 80 mile per hour wind uh, that coming into Edisto Beach, assuming that we get another warning here uh, coming towards Edisto uh, and Little Edisto and Fenwick as well. So, you know, just some really strong winds. We actually got some ground truth to that. There was a report of 80 mile per hour winds on Hilton Head Island and just incredibly torrential rain as well. And so certainly there's going to be a flash flood threat as that comes through. Now, another thing we've been watching is some little circulations. The radar is in kind of a strange mode right now, but there's one of these uh, more profound circulations just offshore. It's not being warned on right now, but uh, as you look at this area here, we've got uh, there is Beaufort and then Frogmore and Harbor Island, Hunting Island right there. And there is a lighthouse on Hunting Island that you can climb to the top of. Uh, how'd you like to be at the top of that right now with that big circulation passing just off your east? I bet that would uh, be kind of a wild ride up there, probably pretty scary. But uh, again, no tornado warning on that right now, but we'll see if that changes. We just did have a tornado warning moments ago for Buford, and there is a tornado watch that is going until 5 o'clock in the morning for southern parts of South Carolina and also eastern Georgia. Another big part of this has been the rain. This is a massive rainmaker that's been going on all day long. Widespread areas of 3 to 4 to 5 inches of rain with some spots getting more than 8 inches. Uh, in uh, southeast Georgia in particular. Uh, that's where we've seen just a, a lot of heavy rain. We had a flash flood uh, emergency earlier today, and uh, or at least a, one with a considerable threat earlier today. And here you see that big area of heavy rain that is coming up into Walterboro, uh, moving towards Somerville and Charleston. That is going to be coming through uh, probably inside of an hour and then more rain beyond that. So really it's going to be uh, one to two to three o'clock in the morning. Then it begins to taper off after that. But certainly there's going to be an ongoing flash flood threat there in southeast South Carolina as well as eastern Georgia and the heaviest of rain really centered on Charleston and you'll have winds also driving into the coastline there and so uh, right as the water is trying to run back out and we've had a you know long history of having issues with that in Charleston uh, right as the water is trying to run back out we're going to see water uh, getting a little bit higher most likely along the coast with the wind driving it in. So winds now gusting to 32 in Savannah and they'll be picking Picking up in Charleston, that onshore flow will be increasing uh, right as that band is coming through. And so certainly there could be some high water in and around Charleston through the overnight hours tonight. Mark, over to you. And Carl, we want to take a look now live again with Charles Peak Storm Tracker for us into the Savannah area. Look at this giant tree from the left side of your screen fell, pulled up the sidewalk, it looks like, from the root ball, uh, split and landed on this vehicle. I mean, that's why we tell you that the, the threat of falling trees is so dangerous in even tropical storms, heavy rain, gusty winds, severe thunderstorms. You had it all around the Savannah area. Uh, Charles, want to bring you back in with us. We got a minute left or so till we go to break, but uh, set the scene for us. What did you come upon here? Yeah, this uh, car obviously uh, don't think it intended to have a tree on top of it tonight. But, Probably not. Uh, it looks like the sidewalk, uh, you know, the, the ground underneath it, and, and possibly even maybe a little rotten in the 
the root base, but enough wind that uh, lifted up the concrete base and uh, down on the, uh, the car here. Bad placement for the parked vehicle, I suppose. Uh, so, but we knew tree damage was going to be a problem. We also knew that flooding would be a problem. We were talking with you about uh, in a half hour ago or so with all those cars stuck in the water. Any updates from that scene? Talked to several of the people that did, and, um, you know, they just didn't realize it. it was raining hard. They couldn't see how deep it was until it was too late. But a real neat couple uh, with a house right there by it uh, is taking about seven people in and uh, taking care of them tonight. Uh, people taking care of others. Got to love to see that. Charles Peak, thanks so much. Also want to update everyone on a brand new tornado warning that has popped up once again in that same complex of thunderstorms that was exiting Hilton Head going through Beaufort. It's still Beaufort County, also into Colleton. Tornado warning until 1 a.m. We'll give you an update on this in just a bit. There's an America we built. Welcome back to our coverage of Tropical Storm Elsa. We are looking at a new tornado warning now in Beaufort and Colleton counties. This is about halfway between Charleston and Savannah in South Carolina and a radar indicated tornado warning. So a couple of circulations. One of those is now right at least at the last radar scan was right over Hunting Island and Harbor Island, a place that I have stayed uh, many, many times. A beautiful area. I hope nothing's going on there. Uh, but certainly uh, there's this threat for a, a possible tornado and that's going to come out then into the Harbor River and uh, perhaps towards uh, Ashapu siding in the longer term. If it does hold together, these things tend to be very fleeting in nature. They tend to not last very long at all, uh, but certainly you can get tornadoes and you can uh, see uh, very robust circulations developing for short periods of time. Uh, here's another tornado warning within the same area or rather another couplet within in the same tornado warning and that coming towards Hickory Hill and also towards Ashapoo Crossing and uh, into Hendersonville at about 1256. And we just got a brand new scan on the radar. Let's take a look at that. And so already, uh, just as I was saying, already those areas, uh, at least the one to the south, is not as pronounced. You can go back just one scan here and you can see right in there, pretty tight little area of rotation, very next scan. It has broadened out some. It's not nearly as well defined, but that having been said, a little bit tighter in here, that little feature actually has tightened up a little bit. So that could very well uh, be a, a tornado or a water spout. I'm not sure if that's, it looks like that might be in the intertidal area. So once again, let's track that forward and that coming towards Hickory Hill uh, right about now. Very tight little circulation could very well be a tornado and then uh, moving towards Ashpoo Crossing and also towards Blue House Corners beyond that. Now, as we expand the picture out, you notice that there are a lot of little areas that look sort of like dimples in there. That's not surprising. There are many, many storms that are showing some level of rotation and not surprising at all. You've got a landfalling tropical storm and you've got winds coming out of different directions in the lowest levels of the atmosphere from the surface up to 5,000 feet. That turning of the winds and also an increase in wind speed lends itself to spinning in the atmosphere, which then gets into the these storms and that's the beginning of the process that that leads us to tornadoes. So tornado watch in effect until five o'clock in the morning for southern parts of South Carolina and also for Georgia. Uh, another huge threat tonight is the heavy rain. There you see this big swirl, this big mass of rain that has come up across uh, southeast Georgia and South Carolina and that threat moving into Charleston over the next few hours here. Mark, over to you. Yeah, and speaking of that flooding, want to go through some of the new video that we've seen of heavy rain leading to flooding. This was from the Brunswick area earlier today. Brunswick had a flash flood warning uh, because of this heavy rain, and we really saw the water piling up on some of the streets, as you can see here, right up against people's homes. Uh, hopefully no significant structure damage, but it was real close. And if it was it was one of those situations that it was so close that if a car then came through and drove down the street, that may have been the proverbial straw that, you know, the wake from the car was then enough to push water into the buildings, like maybe what that police vehicle is doing right then. It's as if I ordered that up. Sorry, everybody. Hopefully that uh, that wave did not then push water into your building. Now, 
Let's talk about where the heavy rain is right now and where the flood threat is ongoing. We'll start off by looking at the current position of our tropical storm. Uh, tropical storm Elsa continuing to move north northeast close to uh, what is it 16 miles per hour now. Uh, this is the big blow up of heavy rain that we're watching near the South Carolina coast and where we also have the embedded severe weather, including the tornado warning that Carl was just showing us big complex of thunderstorms in there. There is the curl of very heavy rainfall that is working up the South Carolina coast, but it didn't just go through South Carolina. Going back here throughout the day, we watched that same cluster of storms more or less feet, uh, being fed by the tropical waters of the Atlantic, but you can just walk all the way up the coastline widespread three to five inch rains, some areas overachieving even from that. And then we can go even more recently, just the past three hours. Look at this. This is all within the past three hours this is that all that complex that is bringing us the current tornado warnings that Carl was just showing us uh, very heavy rain. So the chance for flooding continues across that area. It's why tonight through tomorrow morning, not only possible, but likely that we could see more flooding for the South Carolina coastline. Uh, that's through the rest of the night. For tomorrow, we follow that circulation farther north and we could see more flooding for the mid Atlantic states and uh, even continuing north from there as we go towards Friday, an isolated chance for flooding. This is a look at how much rain is still on the way. Oh, this is a mountain. Tropical systems often do produce tornadoes, and we're seeing that threat continuing right now. Tornado watch through the rest of the overnight hours until 5 a.m. So that's the area that tornadoes are possible, but they are happening. Uh, at least there's a chance of imminent tornadoes happening in this tornado warning. Portions of Beaufort and Carlton counties, including Hendersonville, uh, a couple of spots of radar indicated spin. This tornado warning goes until the top of the hour, 1 a.m., so about 20 more minutes. And again, there are several areas that we're watching. One that's right in here and another one right back here. And you could make the argument that there are several more waiting down the line off the coast still and behind our banner. So uh, that will be coming in uh, on shore uh, at some point if they uh, hold in their you know, current trajectory. So timing out those two areas of better spin, this one's still over water, but could be coming towards Bennett's Point, Ashpoo siding and Ashpoo uh, with the timing uh, over the next 20 minutes or so for those cities. Uh, first Bennett's Point by 1243. The other couplet looks a little bit better. This one a little bit tighter, a slightly better chance of actually having a tornado with that one, at least right now. And so Hickory Hill, since you're first in line, this is a dangerous storm for you. And if you're not in Hickory Hill, but you're just east from there along 17, that timing is about the same, somewhere near 1240 or so. So about five minutes from now, uh, actually within the next uh, three to five minutes, it will be in your area. And then Ashpoo Crossing by 1250 uh, called out again. Blue House Corners by about 1250 as well. Uh, while while we're here, I want to take a look at the correlation coefficient, which is also sometimes called the debris tracker, just to see if there was anything in that area that was being lofted up. It does not appear so at the moment. A questionable zone up here for sure. Let's take a look at the traditional mode of the radar to see what's there. And the answer is nothing. You see how we have this little hole right there where we don't have any returns on the radar. Well, if there's nothing for the radar to bounce off of, there won't be a correlation there. So that makes sense as to why we're seeing that drop off. That's good news. That is not debris. That that is just something wonky with those returns in there. I'm sure it is raining, but the radar beam, for whatever reason, isn't seeing it. So again, we've got this, this warning that continues until 1 a.m., uh, you know, reissued, extended, whatever the wording is, uh, confirmed that we still have this threat by the National Weather Service office. That kind of update on this warning came through in the past couple of moments. And so uh, both those areas with potential spin heading uh, 
uh, heading inland goes until 1 a.m. The atmosphere is really conducive to seeing this spin over the next several hours. We've got our area of low pressure from Elsa centered back here. Look at this flow coming in from the Gulf, sorry, from the Atlantic and wrapping back in. So our low level flow looks like that, while our upper level flow looks more like this. And so that is a pronounced change with height, especially in this area where we have a 90 degree or more turn with height and within only a mile, right? The, those uh, red lines I drew, that's about 5,000 feet up, a mile or so up in the atmosphere. So the lowest level of our atmosphere and uh, seeing enough turn to support more tornadoes. It's why the uh, Storm Prediction Center said it was a possibility that we would see tornadoes and why our Torcon values are at a three out of 10. We have a history of this already today. Several tornado reports from earlier today down towards Florida. We had one near I-10, one come across the south side of Jacksonville, one in southeast Georgia, and then a couple of questionable storms more recently towards that uh, kind of Savannah to Hilton Head area. So that will, we'll have to just wait. We'll have to wait and see what the National Weather Service survey teams say for the storms to the north. No uh, storm reports came out about them yet, Carl, but there's certainly an area or two where there was tree damage co-located with at least some spin on radar. So there's a chance that we had some other tornadoes up that I-95 corridor earlier today. Yeah, we saw an amazing video earlier also uh, of one of those tornadoes, just a large, uh, almost wedge-like uh, tornado uh, outside of Jacksonville. Well, that tornado threat will continue tomorrow, as will the heavy rainfall threat. It's going to move right up the coast. There you see D.C. on the left and New York on the right. Both of those cities could be in for flash flooding and gustier wind on the coast in particular. So the southeastern part of the Chesapeake Bay, the Del Marva, as well as the Jersey Shore, Long Island. Those are the areas that are going to be in for a strong wind tomorrow. Let's show you the model forecast and show you the system. There's the center of circulation right there. Bands of rain being driven in through the day tomorrow. So a lot of heavy rain in Raleigh. That's going to go on really for most of the day tomorrow. Heavy rain coming up into Richmond into the evening, moving up and across the Del Marva overnight, just outside of D.C. Early Friday morning, heavy rain sitting on Philadelphia and coming into northern Jersey and New York. And then that'll go on for a few hours and then it's going to begin to uh, move out and up into the northeast after that. Now, I wanted to show you very quickly uh, what's going on with the uh, flash flood guidance in the northeast. And so what this is showing us is the amount of rain that would be necessary to produce flooding in the northeast. And as you know, there is an awful lot of concrete and asphalt in New York City. And so when you look at a lot of areas of northeastern Jersey, uh, from Patterson down to Edison and uh, just west of Manhattan, many, many areas looking at between one and two inches in one hour to cause flash flooding. And when we watch that big band of heavy rain come up and across New York City early Friday morning, we could be looking at one to two inches per hour. So, you know, the urban nature of the landscape adds to that flood threat. So there are flood watches in New York City, down through New Jersey, southeastern Pennsylvania, including Philadelphia, uh, the Del Marva, just outside of uh, D.C. into southern Maryland, and then down through southeast Virginia and central North Carolina. Kleenex Ultra Soft Tissues.
Severe weather threat continues along the Carolina coastline, specifically the South Carolina coast. Tornado watch through the rest of the overnight hours goes until 5 a.m. And within that zone, a tornado warning right now, kind of in between Beaufort and Edisto Beach. We've got a tornado warning. It's Beaufort County as well as Colleton County. Radar indicated spin in a couple of different spots. So again, this warning continues for the next 10 minutes at least and uh, a couple of different areas that we've been following. Now, many of those are kind of broadening out and opening up right now, but the, you know, there's a, a little couplet area here and here where you see the uh, green to blue changing back over to dark green, almost red. You see that there, you see that there. So there's two of them right next to each other. I also, before we go any further, want to kind of zoom out on this view and show you what could still be coming because that that kind of uh, sheer line or area where the spin looks a little bit more put together, well, that continues down the row, right down here and right down here. Both of those have several areas where there could be uh, water spouts right now or at least some circulation. That is, they, as it approaches land and that frictional change continues to bend the lowest level winds, while the upper level winds don't feel that as fast. And sometimes that's just enough to change the shear ingredients and allow for these storms to start to rotate just a little bit stronger and kick in a tornado threat. So it would not surprise me at all if over the next, say, hour or two, if we continue to follow this line moving north, well, look who's up the coast, Charleston. If you are anywhere near the Charleston Folly Beach area, you're watching us right now, please monitor those lines of storms coming your way uh, in case we get any more warnings. But uh, zooming back in to this area, we're going to have to update the timing on this a little bit because the storm that was here to the south has really fizzled out. So I don't think that particular uh, one is going to be a threat, but we do have that couplet up here. And so if you're near Ashpoo, if you're near Burnt, Chur uh, Burnt Church Crossroads or Davis Hill, that kind of next little area of spin is headed your way. Uh, good news that the one that was off the coast seemed to have opened up and fizzled out a little bit because that one was rather well put together. So it's good news that it has opened up a bit and, and maybe that threat has lessened a bit, but we still have that chance for a spin up tornado uh, in this area. And again, that threat is not done. Here's another one of those zones, maybe Ritter, Walterboro and Stokes. That's that top end of the uh, of that shear zone. And you can make the argument that there's another one even up towards that top end of our warning. I think this warning will uh, it, it, it be fine tuned by one o'clock, maybe dropped, but maybe, you know, looking at that next little uh, complex coming in from the coast and, and shifting a little bit. It, the coastal area is really favorable to see that spin because we've got that low level wind bending back towards our area of low pressure over here, but the upper level pattern is crossing over at a very different wind direction. Uh, more than a 90 degree turn with height will definitely allow that chance for tornadoes. Uh, we were, you know, warning of you the, of this all day. The Storm Prediction Center was saying, yeah, this is the zone tonight that we need to monitor for. And I don't think we're going to see widespread tornadoes within here, but a couple are certainly possible. It's why we have a Torcon of three out of 10 through the night. It is reasonably rare in this part of the world to see tornado threats overnight, but that's what we have. Remember that tornado watch continues all the way until 5 a.m. And then Carl, there's a chance that some of those same ingredients will follow the storm up the coastline. And so we're going to see that chance for active weather tomorrow, mid Atlantic into the Northeast. Yeah, that's right. We are going to be looking at a tornado threat uh, extending farther north. And as a matter of fact, we can show you uh, where that tornado threat will be into tomorrow afternoon. It's going to be in the eastern part of North and South Carolina. We've got a Torcon of two for those areas, also up into Tidewater, Virginia. So a lot of the very same conditions that are in place tonight will be in place again tomorrow. And then there's broadly going to be a threat for tropical storm force winds in the Carolinas and then out into the Jersey Shore there and up along the northeast coast as the storm.
storm moves northward. So here's how that is likely to time out. Uh, the mid-Atlantic region seeing a real big increase in wind by the time we get into tomorrow evening. So 40 to 50 mile per hour wind there in Norfolk, Virginia, 30 to 35 miles per hour in Ocean City. It's going to be gusty in D.C., but it's going to be uh, more towards the coast where we find the more substantial wind. Then that coming up uh, into the Jersey Shore and into Long Island uh, early on Friday. Here's a closer look at what's going to be happening up in uh, Long Island in New Jersey. And you see that wind really starting to come in there to Long Island uh, on Thursday afternoon. And then another uh, round here on the way, kind of just brushing by the side and then clipping southeastern uh, New England. And so that's uh, Friday morning where we expect to see some stronger winds and going into the middle of the day on Friday, 40 to 50 mile per hour winds there in southeastern New England in particular. Also a heavy rain threat, flash flood watches from Raleigh up into the Delmarva and on into New York City. Here's a model forecast showing you this big mass of rain. Uh, coming across southern Maryland and uh, New Jersey and up into New York City early on Friday. So Friday morning could be a very difficult commute in New York City. Uh, we only need about an inch or two in many parts of the tri-state area to get flash flooding within an hour. And we certainly could see that come Friday morning. We'll have more coming up in just a couple of minutes. DiGiorno has seven delicious crusts, and your family food critics will rave. Croissant crust is flaky layers of buttery bliss. Rising crust is fresh baked deliciousness. There's a five-star pizza for everyone in your family to love. It's not delicious. Welcome back. We've been tracking Tropical Storm Elsa for what feels like forever at this point. Here's the latest update from the National Hurricane Center uh, as of the 11 o'clock advisory. Our uh, center at that point was due west from Savannah and from Brunswick, Georgia. Uh, don't be surprised, though, that all the action has been on that east side near the coast. It's been an east loaded system all along the way and continues to be so tonight as it moves north northeast now close to 16 miles per hour. So many of you along the South Carolina coastline for the next several hours will see the worst of the weather shifting to North Carolina by morning. So I want to give you an update on where we're following some of the impacts from this storm because here's a look at the cone. By morning, we'll have our storm moving through central South Carolina by evening approaching southern Virginia and then into Friday morning coming towards New York City. And again, along that path and points just east from it, that's where we're going to have the worst of the rainfall. Uh, wind will be a factor. Here's what's going on right now. Look at Savannah. Savannah, you're behind the rain, but you're now gusting close to 40. The grounds are saturated. There certainly could be more tree and power line issues throughout the night. And uh, as we look at this forecast of wind gusts, that little core of strong winds follows right behind that circulation as we go through the next several hours. We then can transition for the rest of the overnight into tomorrow morning, uh, moving through the rest of South Carolina, Myrtle Beach, Wilmington. You get your uh, gusty winds midday, uh, Cape Hatteras towards the evening, uh, and then uh, the low continues to move north from there. For now, we're also looking at a tornado threat. Tornado watch continues until 5 a.m. We have a new tornado warning just east of the one we've been following. So Beaufort and Calton uh, tornado warning until one that's being dropped. Radar indicated spin for Charleston County, not into the city of Charleston yet, but it would not surprise me at all if we get there. And here's why. Look at this couplet right here. That is one of the stronger couplets that we've seen. It's very small. Let me get a little bit closer in for you. Uh, east of Edisto Beach, this is the most pressing couplet. Still off the coast at this point, but racing inland. So that's one that we'll be watching. And that whole line down the, the row has rotation within it. That's going to be bending its way towards Charleston and Folly Beach as we go through the next several hours. So. Stay tuned. If there are any pressing storms coming your way locally, we'll have updates for you on those storms.